Welcome, 80s wrestling family. It is I, the vivacious, vicious Vicky, yet again with a Monday night virtual. To my right, I do have another guest, a co-host, and a good friend, Mr. Bull James. Thank you, Vicky. Yeah. This is your show, so I want to say thank <laughs> you for the house. Yes. Appreciate you having me on. Of course. I'm glad to have you here with me tonight. And I am not the AWA World Champion. Let's be clear about that. <laughs> so, guys, tonight we have Stan Hansen with us, arguably one of the best wrestling legends to ever walk this earth. Am I right? Absolutely. So, guys, we are in for a huge treat tonight. And as I always say, EdiesWrestlingCon.com. Get those orders in right now. You do not want to miss out on this huge, huge opportunity. Absolutely. So. Four time, I believe. Old Japan Triple Crown winner. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, somebody who set the tone and paved the way for people like myself to be able to go from America to Japan yeah. and earn oh, yeah. living in this industry. Um, absolutely honored to have him, honored to be a part of this. Thanks, Tommy, for bringing Stan in. And, uh, you know, just really special night yeah no guys it's always always a special night here for monday night virtual that's right and as i always say we are so lucky to have these fans with us and guys again this is a huge treat tonight you know speaking of stan hansen now i have to say so you know we're both wrestlers right mm -hmm. we both get it he is renowned for his stiff wrestling style and i must say i mean i tend to be a little stiff myself i don't know about you but maybe yeah, we, maybe you learn from the Vicky. best <laughs> I've heard. I've heard all the rumors going around the locker rooms about you. Oh, okay. So now I'm a locker room topic? Maybe. He's lying. He's yes. lying. He's lying. He's lying, guys. Please lying. don't hit me. <laughs> I'd rather take Larry from Stan than... I will be honest. Sit over here. The Larry at Stan the Larry Hanson. That is where that originated from. One of the absolute best in the business, guys. And I will say, I have actually taken that and tried to perfect it. But I will say, it'll never look as good as his. No. Never. Never, never. One of a kind, and you know, and it's not just because he's in the room right now, but um, <laughs> no, for my, for me personally, Stan Hansen and Bruiser Brody are two of my heroes, um, two huge influences on my career and my love for the industry. So uh, it is really, really cool to have him here. Yeah, no, it is, and arguably a great career for this guy. I mean, this is like I said, four guys in the beginning, one of the absolute best. Best legends, WWE Hall of Famer, the whole nine, the rap sheet goes on and on and on. You were talking about it, wrestling in Japan. Say a criminal? No, no, no. When I say a rap sheet, they all know what I mean, okay, guys. Okay. Right. The career, the highlights, everything. And you were talking about wrestling in Japan, which we know he did as well. So mm -hmm. I mean, you know, having that experience as well, like you know, like you being able to look at someone who's arguably like probably one of your favorites as well, as mm -hmm. we talked about behind the scenes, guys. You know, how is that like wrestling in Japan? It's incredible. I mean, you know. Those fans are so respectful, and, you know, they just, if you work hard for them, mm -hmm. then they will go out of their way for you. Yep. Um, being able to go to a place like a Corican Hall, which has all the history in the world, especially, you know, and not just for wrestling, but especially for wrestling, yeah. that building is one of the most special places I've ever stepped no, foot absolutely. in a ring in, and, um, you know, I absolutely okay. love uh, going to Japan, and I can't wait to get back once, uh, once we're done dealing with COVID and everybody. Yeah. Get your vaccinations so that way I can yeah. go back to Japan. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And, you know, when Mr. Hansen was out there, he did do that tour in 1980. So that was absolutely amazing. Actually, team with Hulk Hogan at one point, which yeah. is pretty freaking cool, if I have to say. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to aim to have as many tours as Stan did in Japan. That's, my, that's, <laughs> that's my the goal, guys. That's the goal, too. I will say that is my goal as well. i got so to catch up. Yeah, <laughs> You, I, I'm uh, light years behind you, so i got to catch up, too, guys. But again, guys, um, as we're talking here about the career of Mr. Stan Hansen, guys, please, 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in for that 8x10 signed by him. You guys, this is going to be a real treat, as I always say. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Um, the pre-orders uh, that are in, by the way, are pretty cool. I'm actually kind of jealous that some of these people have this stuff. <laughs> it is. And that's what we, I will tell you, every show we have, guys, the fans make it. Yeah. You know, and what they bring in here, what we see every single time, every Monday that we're here and what they bring in. It's absolutely amazing. We have people, we have crazy fans. You guys are crazy in the best way. These fans leave these things with him. 
I saw you know, and get uh, them a, poster, signed over time. a poster from the first ECW show, which was yeah. really, really cool. Super cool. The things that these people have. And that is exactly why Mr. Tommy Fierro, as I always say, diligent working behind the scenes, he has that wrestling collector store. And you guys know that those are the things that you find there. Yeah. You know, these are the things that we find. And these fans have these things. And it actually blows my mind. Yeah, that I, they wonder, still you know, I still have to check out the store. But from all the pictures yeah. and videos I've oh, seen, yeah. it looks amazing. So if you're in the area, definitely go and check it out. Absolutely, guys. And I... Listen, I wish that I had half the things that I had yeah. as a kid. My mother threw everything out, so I can't even get things signed anymore. So I'm a little disappointed with that. But anyway, so guys, real quick, also going to do a quick plug here. 80s Wrestling, the podcast, as we all know, climbing in the rankings weekly. It is absolutely amazing. And the last episode was with Shane Douglas, who was here last week. We had a great time with him. He was actually on my pre-show. Oh, it was pretty see? cool. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool, yeah. Franchise himself. Yeah. <laughs> so having the Lariat here... Being a fan, you know, what was your favorite moment? Favorite moment in his history? I mean, anytime you watch, again, goes back to Stan and Bruiser Brody. Mm -hmm. um, so many great matches, you know, um, watching them wrestle the Funks. Yeah. I mean, just, it, there's, it's, if you're not, if you're not somebody who has seen any of this stuff, you live in an age where you have YouTube, and I, urge you to go out of your <laughs> yes, way to check yes. it out. I mean, it's some of the best wrestling you'll ever see. Yeah, ev everything is on YouTube, the network, well now it's on Peacock, but everything, guys, I wish I had this when I was younger, you know, being yeah. able to relive all these moments, and I will say, uh, my favorite moment was Halloween Havoc, when Hanson actually broke the record of Luger, only to lose, lose it back again a couple days later, but I think that was an actually record-setting moment in history. Well... You have your opinion, and I have mine. Oh! <laughs> okay, tell me, tell me. I told you already. Yeah. <laughs> there's got to be more. There's got to be more, there's guys. There's plenty more, and I've just told people, go to YouTube, smart yourselves up, learn your history, especially if you're somebody that's, you know, in the wrestling industry that wants to get better, that wants yeah. to learn. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, everybody should know their history. Yeah, no, absolutely. And reliving all those moments again, I said this last week as well and I, and I totally mean it guys it's the truth you know we have all these platforms nowadays to relive the history and relive these moments that I even I wasn't alive for yeah. you know to be able to actually go back and rewatch it and study it and do everything you know whether you're a wrestler or a fan to be able to have those at your fingertips like that and watch the incredible careers of the likes of a Stan Hansen is absolutely incredible you can't ask for anything better than no that, right? absolutely not that's, that's, that's fantastic that's, that's wrestling guys that's the world that we live in that's the best part of it so, with that you being said, said <laughs> what was that? You said it, sister. I said it, see? So, guys, again, we have Stan Hansen here tonight. We are so, so incredibly honored to Get be here Get your pre-orders. Yes, pre-order, 80wrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in, guys. You know, uh, we are so, so happy to be here and really, really want to continue to support as well. So, have you listened to 80s Wrestling, the podcast? All the time. Okay. Of I was just waiting for my say, invite to he's go a good, on. He's a good friend. He's a good friend. Trying, but... to, you know, trying to go on. <laughs> but I actually have a surprise for oh. all of the uh, pre-show watchers oh, out there. Oh, I love surprises. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pull up a chair here. You guys hand me a chair from over there. A man that you may have seen recently on uh, Dark Side of the Ring. Oh. Sunny Beach. Let's come and join us. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Very Surprises nice are always Always good, pleasure. guys. How 80s wrestling you, family. Hello, sir. How are you? Thank My you for pleasure. joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank See, you. See, guys, 80s wrestling con. This you never know who's going to show exactly. up. Exactly. You never know, guys. You never know. <laughs> Tommy's got to slip me a couple extra bucks under the table. Sure, yeah, come on in. Well, thanks for being here. It's my pleasure. This thank is you exciting. for having me. Appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm doing great. If uh, you know, do any better, I'll be uh, <laughs> <laughs> happy. So uh, you, uh, you got to be around Stan a lot over the course of your career. Oh, yeah. Uh, any any memories that stick out to you? Well, Stan was the first person to take me to try sushi. Um, oh, sushi, <laughs> when, uh, okay. <laughs> we were filming No Holds Barred in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, we were hanging out down there, and we got to be good friends down there, and we still remain friends today. Aww. So, See, guys, uh, that's amazing. There's some great stories here, Japan, No Holds Barred, um, you know. Uh, hanging out with our wives and stuff after our, we all retired, so uh, I mean, we're, we're having a good time. Aw, see, that's amazing in the business. I love yeah. that. You know, Absolutely. just having, having that camaraderie this whole time. It's really, really something that's special. That's great. Yeah. What are uh, some of your favorite memories from Japan? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Working against Stan. <laughs> <laughs> Him not breaking my neck. There you go. Fair, fair. Um, 
Me and uh, Del Wilkes wrestled Stan and Johnny Ace in uh, Bruiser Brody Memorial, and uh, oh. that was one of my big uh, memories from Japan. And uh, Stan getting me booked over in Japan was, uh, you know, one of the highlights of my career over there and stuff. Working for Giant Baba and um, getting to be in the tag league in 1991 with him, and then I came back in. Uh, 92 with a summer action series and they tagged me and Del Wilkes together and uh, got to wrestle uh, Dynamite Kid as uh, one of his last matches in uh, oh, wow. Budokan Hall. Amazing. So that was a pretty cool deal too and uh, just you know being around the boys and uh, getting to see Japan. I mean it's a beautiful country and I loved it there and uh, loved the style over there. I worked with Masawa Kawada and uh, Andre and Abdul the Butcher so Amazing. there was just uh, the who's who of wrestling was in Japan and you know Stan was the the best American wrestler to ever come out of Japan. Him and the Funks, and you know, and then so, you know, big, sure. uh, yeah. big honor to be with the, the guys over there, get booked over there. Yeah. Do you have any uh, any good Andre stories <laughs> that you can tell that we can answer? Uh, there, there's a few, you know, right in the elevator with Andre was always something special. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you never know what, what was going to happen in the elevator, but um, <laughs> you know, uh, one time we were at the garden, and I'll, I'll share the story, but I, I don't like to talk bad about the dead or nothing like that, but uh, it was a funny story, so I'll tell it. Uh, you know, Andre's been known, he's a, a great guy, and he was a joker, and if he liked you, he liked you, and he did, and he didn't. <sighs> so um, we were all riding down the elevator, and I was with uh, Haku, Bobby Heenan, myself, and Andre. So we're coming down the freight elevator, going to our cars, they're parked down in the basement by the garden. And uh, all of a sudden, you hear like a big bellow. Whoa. <laughs> Sounded like a car horn going off. But it was like for like 15 seconds. Oh, my goodness. So Andre, you know, relieved himself in the elevator. And, uh, and Bobby Heenan goes up to Andre and goes, uh, Boss, you okay? He goes, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a pretty funny Andre story. And then watching Andre like in Japan and stuff and um, – you know, he was known for his, you know, how much he could drink and consume of alcohol, wine, or beer. And uh, seeing him firsthand consume some alcoholic beverages was a nice, uh, oh, yeah. you know, feat to say, you know, say the least. Yeah. But, you know, it was, it was a good time. It's yeah. amazing. We always hear on 80s Wrestling Con all these fun, amazing Andre stories that I wish I was there for. Because these just sound absolutely incredible. That was I have to say. One our kind of <laughs> they get better and better. By default. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to experience that, but it just happened, so. Oh, my goodness. It's too funny. Well, <laughs> guys, you have it here. I mean, like I said, 80s Wrestling Con, we always have surprise guests. We always have surprise co-hosts. We are here. We are going to be live. Mr. Stan Hansen is going to be signing again one more time, guys. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in, and we thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, My and pleasure. 80s Wrestling family. We're going to have to talk about some Herb Abrams stories off the air. Yeah, we'll yeah we'll do, do, do that off the air. Do that I'm off sure the air. I'll be back around. I don't think Tommy Fierro, I'd like to say happy birthday to Tommy. His birthday was yesterday, yes, 44 yes. years old. Tommy. I know Thank Tommy you. when he was a little boy. Uh, he used to carry my bags. Yeah. And, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, no, but I, I, he still I, does. I saw him doing it today. I take my hat off to Tommy. He's done great in the business. Oh, you know, yeah. He's got his new store, wrestling collector and stuff. So I wish him all the best with that. And uh, he's doing great things, bringing uh, the boys in for you know these signings and stuff, and giving back to the wrestling community. And he's one of the good guys in the wrestling business. So Thank you guys, you. Uh, sure. you know, when you guys you know see Tommy's name on anything, eighties WrestleCon or whatever he's doing with the store. Or, you know, please support them uh, and support the wrestling community. That's right. Thank you. My that was pleasure. amazing. That was a great send off, guys. I'm going to turn it over to Ryan. Have a good one. We'll see you later.
80swrestlingcon.com. I'm Ryan Moore. I'm your host. We are back with yet another Monday Night Virtual. This one's a big one. I just want to give a shout out to everybody that's been following these along every Monday night that we're doing them. Last week we had the ECW Legend signing. Couldn't really get to too many comments and questions in the chat because we had five of the legends here going back and forth reminiscing tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun because I have a man next to me that doesn't need an introduction to any wrestling fan. Former six-time World Heavyweight Champion, the greatest American wrestler in the long-storied history of Japanese pro wrestling. You've seen him in No Holds Barred, and 45 years ago today, he broke the neck of Bruno San Martino at Madison Square Garden. Did you remember that that was 45 years ago today? No, I did not. <laughs> Shout out to Thorsten Fritz, 80s Wrestling Con fan. He, he dropped that message on my Instagram email earlier today. And he said, was that planned? Did you book Stan Hansen? And of course I lied and said, absolutely. <laughs> we know what we're doing here, but nice little coincidence. Stan yeah. the Lariat Hansen, ladies and gentlemen. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm doing good, thank you. You know, I'm doing all right. It's a good time to be here. We're having fun. Monday Night Virtual, we started these due to COVID-19. They've blown up, and I just want to let you guys know, I tested negative and I'm double vaccinated. This is allergies from living in New Jersey, where it's 80 degrees one day and it's 42 degrees the next day. So that's what winds up happening. But we're excited to be here. We have a lot of stuff to get to. Get those orders in at 80swrestlingcon.com. We have memorabilia from all over the world. We got stuff from Japan. We got stuff from AWA. Does it ever get old when you do these and you have people coming up to you with all these memories? You know, I enjoy... Uh when I was wrestling, I was not a fan type of guy. I didn't uh, interact with a lot of fans. But since I've been retired over 20 years now, I mean, I, I, I get a chance to interact with some fans and everything. And you know what? It's, it's really nice, and I'm humbled that people still remember me. Well, one of the things that always uh, – my first memory of you, like Vicky had said in the pre-show, was in WCW in 1990. And, you know, you always heard Stan Hansen from Japan, you know, a guy goes over there, you know, from Texas, but goes to Japan. And then it was years later, I got my hands on some Japanese wrestling tapes, and it always amazed me how different the fans were over there. They seemed much more reserved until you came out. Once you came out, it was like a, a reaction to Godzilla. They'd be frantic, they'd be running around, you'd be swinging that cowbell. Were there things that stood out amongst Japanese wrestling fans? Like, were there a lot of differences that you noticed as a wrestler between American fans and Japanese fans? Well, you know, the very first time I went to Japan, I think it was uh, 1975, and uh, this was before, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, present day and uh, later wrestling was going on. And most of the fans were uh, salary men or, or guys that worked in business, that everybody wore it suit and tie and everything was very calm and uh, they, they, uh, they actually told me, it says, you go out and you hear no reaction, don't worry about it. The matches, you know, you just go out and have your match because people don't say anything. And sure enough, that's the way it was back in 1975. You go through the crowd or, I mean, we, I didn't go through the crowd <laughs> back then, but uh, you know, they just, they were very reserved, very respectful. And it was completely different things, but that changed over time. I can imagine, yeah, we, we, we've all seen it. And then you come back to America, and it was a completely different style. And I think that's why you stood out. And back to Vicky's point, one of my favorite promos to this day was after you won that United States title. And Paul Heyman, as Paulie Dangerously, was interviewing you. And you had one of the best lines ever, because Paul Heyman said to you, Mr. Hansen, congratulations. And you had the mouthful of tobacco, and you said, I'm not shaking your hand. And then he goes, oh, okay, sir. And he goes, you're going to bring the U.S. title back to Japan? And you said, I may just bring it to Texas and put bullet holes in it. And I thought that was the coolest thing at seven years old. I'm like, this guy is out of his mind. And I think that's what got a lot of wrestling fans into that style because it was so unique at that time. There was you and Vader going in there and just beating the crap out of each other. And we didn't see that in America. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's a good thing because, uh, you know, Vader, uh, what, what a horse he was. And I mean, uh, we literally <laughs> did damage to each other probably for the rest of our lives. You know, he, he was a very solid, strong guy. And uh, man, I mean, you know, we fought each other tooth and nail. And he was on one side of the Japanese company and I was on a different company. And it was like real competition. So I, I had a lot of respect for Vader and I think he 
respected me. All right, well, I think I think everybody that ever got in the ring with you did. Andy Olinsky's asking for Vader stories. We just talked about Vader. Keep those comments coming in. Someone's asking how much for pictures. 80swrestlingcon.com has all the info. We're gonna get started. Here's how it works, guys. You place your order. I pass it along to Mr. Hansen. He holds it up and gives you a shout out. We're gonna start off with here you go, former AWA World Heavyweight Champion Jesse Rocha from Canada sending that in. And that's silver to Jesse. All right. Well, thank you, Jesse. Kyle James, Stan Hansen is a legend all over the world, no doubt about that. Here goes Jesse. Thanks. Next up, we got Marshall Hodge from Tennessee. To Marshall. To Marshall. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in for tonight. The store is going to be open till 9.30. You can also check out the list of all the amazing upcoming signings we have for Monday Night Virtual. Also follow the Wrestling Collector on Instagram. There's going to be a bunch of in-person signings. If you're in the North Jersey area or if you want to make it a pilgrimage, come on up and visit the Wrestling Collector. Check out all the signings that are going to be taking place there. you there. go, Marshall. Sean McBride in Danville, Illinois. To Sean. Oh. Don't worry about it. We got uh, it. I misspelled your name. Sorry, <laughs> man. You know. It happens to the best of us. Don't worry about it. Anyway, Sean, sorry. Maybe I'll know next time. All right. Next up, we got Bob Richards, Joliet, Illinois, to Bob Richards. All right. I should be able to spell Bob. <laughs> B-O-B, spell it backwards, it's still B-O-B. That's a little cheat sheet that I have for myself. There you go, Bob. Nigel Edgington, Thanks. the question that I was going to ask you anyway, how did you wind up in No Holds Barred? Well, I mean, uh, I, I'm not quite sure. I, uh, <laughs> Vince, Vince and Hogan, they were making the movie. They... They said there was a certain part in there that they naturally kind of thought of me that I could do, That's and uh, they got a hold of me, and I was really happy to do it. I'd never been in a movie, and I had a great time. I was hoping that we would have seen you in more movies after that. I think the most iconic line in No Holds Barred was delivered by you, Tiny Wangers, which I, I think to this day, when people think of No Holds Barred, they think of Zeus's entrance, and they think of Tiny Wangers. <laughs> well... Uh, that's true. That's true. I guess a lot of people talk about that that one line. You know, I'm glad I had it. <laughs> Brian Lanzieri in Andover, Connecticut, to Brian. Craig Ooh. Wilbur. Maybe we'll ask for that. Well, maybe we'll close with that at the end of the night. But hold that thought. So if you're with us at 9:45 or so, remind me of that. 80swrestlingcon.com. Don't forget, guys. If you're watching along in the chat, thanks, feel Brian. Free to, I appreciate it. Feel free. Glad to share you this. have a memory. Feel free to share this link with other wrestling fans. This one's for Jan in Canada. To Jan. To Jan. That's a different name. There you go. Dennis Grinnell, what an honor to listen to hear the stories of a true wrestling legend. That's what it's all about. We do these many Monday nights, 80swrestlingcon.com. Douglas Hastings in Burlington, Massachusetts. Just the signature. Norge Arca, go to 80swrestlingcon.com. That's how you can place your order. All right. Thanks, Justin. Another shot of you with the AWA World Heavyweight Championship. I think everybody loves that legendary story about you with the AWA World title. Christopher in Georgia. To Chris, AWA champ. Well, these pins don't seem to want to... There you go, Chris. Craig Wilbur, friend to 80s Wrestling Con. But with all these signings, Craig's always very active. So he's in Windsor, Vermont. To Craig, WWE yeah. Hall of Fame 2016.
You've got me saying a lot on this thing. <laughs> there you go, Craig. Yeah, I think we're going to have to start charging by the word. Next up, we got Matt Stevens in Taylor's, South Carolina, silver to mesh. There we go. Just adjusting the shot on the fly there. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Thorsten, Hope you enjoy. Thorsten Fritz wants to know if you have any memories about wrestling Bob Backlund in Japan. Quite a styles clash, he says. Yeah, they, he, you know, Bob had a completely different kind of style. He was uh, he was one of the greatest athletes, I think, that ever came down the pike in, in wrestling. I have a lot of respect for, for him, and, uh, you know, he's he, he was something. Bubba Call says, what's up, Tommy, Ryan, and Stan? How you doing, Bubba? Thanks for tuning in. My buddy Mikey C. just joined in. Huge wrestling fan. What's up, Mikey C.? Can't wait to see you this summer. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in. We're here with Stan the Lariat Hanson until 10 p.m. Was there anything, like, if you were wrestling Bob Backlund in Japan as opposed to the United States, did you purposely say, okay, like, we're in Japan, we have to do it differently, or no? It was just a match to match, pretty much. I don't say anything to anybody. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Emil Menard in silver to Emil. Emil's our 80s Wrestling Con auction champion. Stick around for our auction tonight. We're going to be giving away, well, not giving away, you can buy it. We're going to be auctioning off a lot of great stuff. I've got to be careful what I say. I don't want them to hold it against me. If Tommy ever made me mad, I'd just be like, you know what, we're giving it away. There right. you go. All right. Please forgive me if I butcher your name. C-A-B-E-L-L. Cabell. Cabell Philpot in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Great wrestling town. To Cabell in silver. Cabell. Thanks a lot, Cabell. Brian Garan, who does Stan consider, other than himself, the best American wrestler in Japan? Uh, man, there's a bunch of them. Uh, Terry Funk. Terry Funk had to be one of the, the top guys mm -hmm. ever in Japan. Uh, you know, uh, and I think uh, Brody, obviously, Brody. you know, myself, uh, you know, uh, gee, you know, Vader. I mean, there's a lot of guys that, that really did well in Japan. Ever hear of Gino Moore? Gino Moore. No. no. <laughs> Bill Desmaris in Warwick, Rhode Island. Bill Desmaris in Warwick, Rhode Island. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in. We are here with Stan the Lariat Ants until 10 p.m. Here you go, Bill. Jumpin' Jay, host of the 80s Wrestling Podcast, co host along with Tommy Fierro, Silver 2 J. Dennis Grinnell says, wonder if anybody sent in a cowbell for an autograph. I don't know what the shipping would be on that. Probably not cheap, I would imagine. Here you go, Jay. Thanks. Patrick Mayberry to Patrick in silver. Ooh, Jeff Rubis with an interesting one. Hey, Stan, what was your favorite tobacco to chew? Uh, Red Man. There you go. Anthony D. Simone, Bellport, New York. Yeah, I, I think that's like the go-to. That's like what Marlboro is to cigarettes. Red Man is to chewing tobacco. Or any tobacco that they give somebody give to me. Chris Cooper in Roaring Spring, Pennsylvania. Silver to Coop. To Coop. Don't forget, if you're watching us on Facebook, click share. Share this link. You never know what wrestling fans could be on your feed. Wind up seeing this. They want a shout out and a photo from the man himself. Thanks, Coop. They could get it. It's a good name. Sissy Hall in Murrells Inlet, South Carolina. Silver to Sissy. My nickname in college, Sissy. <laughs> 80swrestlingcon.com.
Thanks, Sissy. Appreciate it. All right. Willie Pennell in Ripley, Missouri. To Willie in silver. Thanks, Willie. Appreciate it. All right. Now we're switching over to red markers. This is to Hanson and Brody Jones. Brothers are forever. An amazing picture of you and the one and only Bruiser Brody. Yeah. So great shot. This is for Eric. Well, it's from Eric Jones in Plainville, Connecticut, but it's to Hanson and Brody Jones. Brothers are forever. Wow. Jeff Ruba says, thanks, Stan. Loved your AWA promos and matches back in the day. Jones. Joshua Combo, Stan, you are a living legend. Indeed. We have so many great wrestling legends, past and present, past signings, upcoming signings. 80swrestlingcon.com for all your info. Wow. Nigel Edgington in Denver, Colorado. Oh. You had me say so much, I forgot my name. <laughs> there you go. All right, this one's to Nigel and Rebecca. Bob Love, nice shirt, Ryan. Thank you. It's uh, the Roosevelts. Check them out on Instagram. They have a great line of wrestling merchandise. Just go give them a check. Joe and Rebecca. All right, this one's to Jeremy in Painesville, Ohio. To Jeremy. All right, Jeremy. Chris Thanks. Gets Chris gets in in Denver, Colorado. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to cut you off. That's all right. I'm used to it. <laughs> Joshua Combo, I love watching your old matches, Stan. I'm only 28 years old. That's the great thing about the internet and the WWE Network. So much great stuff. Fans of all different ages. Thanks, Chris. All right. Next up, we got Annie Spivey in Marion, South Carolina. To Annie. Thanks, Annie. I have a feeling I may know the answer to this question, and uh, Sonny Beach was on the pre-show with Vicky and Bull James. He told a quick Andre the Giant story, but Travis Babcock wants to know, did you ever go drinking with Andre? For a very short time. <laughs> Couldn't keep up? Is that what you're trying yeah. to tell us? <laughs> I don't think anybody could. Nobody could. M Matt Finney in Texas. Don't forget, you could share. From, the, he wants from Pampa. Yep. Yep. Don't forget, you could share the link to this signing anywhere on Facebook. You know what Pampa was famous for, don't you? I don't well, you probably know. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, you got to do your research. Okay, I will. <laughs> Jeremy. All right, we got Mike from Howell, New Jersey. To Mike. All 
Next up, we got Mike Tarras from Pennsylvania. Good buddy of mine. How you doing, Mike? Ooh, Michael Smith. Stan Hansen in his prime versus Brock Lesnar. That would have been uh, quite the match. Here we go, Mark. All right, another one for Jumpin' Jay from the 80s Wrestling Podcast. Two J. Vicente, uh, this is a replica of the AWA title, in answer to your question. But nowadays, these replicas are also incredible. It is hard to tell from a distance. Big O.J. This one is Ian from Saddlebrook, New Jersey. To Ian. Thanks, Ian. Joe from Patterson, New Jersey. He wants two Joe, and then I broke Bruno's neck. Mm. In red. Next up, we got Tom Krause in Palmyra, Pennsylvania, to Tom. Thanks, Tom. All right, now we're switching over to blue. Doug Harvey in Galesburg, Illinois, to Doug. There you go. Thank you. Not a problem. Keep those comments coming in. Any memories you have from Stan Hansen's career, long storied career, both in the United States and Japan, feel free to share the link out to this chat. Welcome everybody who's watching along on WrestleZone.com, but if you're on Facebook, feel free to click share. There you go, Doug. All right, next up, Ryan Evans, but it's to Sean, to Sean. Thank you, Sean. Sean. All right, Janelle and Rob Anselmo in Riverbank, California. They want your signature, WWE Hall of Fame 2016, and best brawler, 85 yeah. to 90. Yeah. They're making you work that wrist out today. Jay Roper, Stan the Man, my favorite. Thanks for joining us, Jay. 80swrestlingcon.com if you'd like to order a photo. Bob Love, Ryan is freaking us out when he looks straight at the camera. I have no idea what that means, but okay. <laughs> 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in. Best brawler, never heard that one. Ralph Barbado in Staten Island, New York to Ralph. Here you go, Ralph. Don't be throwing darts at it. <laughs> All right, Colt Campbell in Uniontown, PA. Colt Campbell. Nigel Edgington, I think Ryan should take a Larius. Venmo Ryan more comedy and we'll see what happens. We just lost Buddy Colt. He was great, great wrestler. Next up, Ron Carley in Pennsylvania to Ron HOF 2016. Corey Sandgren, as a kid, I was always scared 
Stan was going to beat up the interviewer when he was yelling and the tobacco was running down his chest. That's what made the promos great. Thank you, thank you. James Oliver in Charleston, West Virginia. To Jason, I got my boot. Not sure what that means, I got my boot. <laughs> If you're watching and you'd like to clarify what it means, drop it in the chat. Colin Gilmore in Portland, uh -huh. Oregon to Colin. I'm sure that probably happens a lot after you know a long story career. Fans probably come up, and, you know, certain that things that stuck out in their mind that you might not even remember. I remember everything. What do you talk about? Oh, okay. <laughs> I stand corrected. Except everything. <laughs> Derek Hansen in Minnesota. Uh, that's black for this one. There we go to Derek Hansen. Don't forget 80swrestlingcon.com. That's where you can get your orders in. Store's going to be open until about 9.30, I believe, tonight. We're with Stan and Larry at Hansen until about 10 p.m. So get those orders in. Also check out all the great upcoming signings that we have in the coming weeks. Lots of awesome ones coming up. Thank you for following along on WrestleZone.com. If you're watching on Facebook, feel free to share the link. So, Derek, you must be a Swede with an O-N. I'm a Dane with an E-N. Oh. There you go. Colin Gilmore in Portland, Oregon. To Colin. Jason Hawkins. Here you go, Colin. Stan was hilarious when he would yell at and chase Larry Nelson around on the AWA interview set. Larry always looked legitimately scared. Maybe he was. <laughs> In the heat of the moment, you never know what's going to happen. Eric Werner in Peabody, Massachusetts. To Eric Werner. Eric Hansen, I believe I do have some Swedish. <laughs> yeah. Corey Sandgren wants to know who hit harder, Vader or Brody? I never really, uh, I only have one match against Brody, so I've had a few with Vader. So that one's freshest, right? <laughs> yeah. Robert Love in Alameda, California, green for this one. Green. Yeah, green, he's oh. got you. Thank you. Housekeeping. Gina Lawson, Indianapolis, Indiana. Just signature and black for that one. And then a bunch of the next ones are all going to be black as well. All right. Francisco Roig, I remember your days in the WWC Puerto Rico feuding with Carlos Colon. Wow, those fans in Puerto Rico, though. They took their wrestling seriously out there, huh? Yeah. Chris Curtis in Moscow, Idaho. To Chris. There you go, Chris. All right, up next we got Wade Bates in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. To Wade in black, 80sWrestlingCon.com. Get those orders in for Stan the Lariat Hansen. Store's going to be open until about 9.30. Don't forget, we have that great auction coming up. Going to be auctioning off the WCW Replica United States title. Got a couple of the old school after mags. There's no way. Uh, another 
novel for you, Mr. Hansen. This oh. is for Jose Navarez in Los Angeles, California. He wants two L. Joe Hall of Fame 2010 PWHF Hall of Fame 2016 WWE. Bob Love, thanks Stan and Ryan, Robert from Alameda, thank you Bob, without you guys we're not able to do this, so thank you. Well, dang. <laughs> A little messed up on the date, but uh, it's alright, just the way it is. We'll, we'll have it done. Ben Globe in the United Kingdom. To Ben. To Ben. All right, Ben. Edward Romero. Hey, Stan, did you ever slam Andre? Yes. <laughs> Anthony Crowley to Anthony. I did. Did you feel it the next day? I'm still feeling it. <laughs> Andrew Snyder, I introduced my nine-year-old to your work recently, and now he's obsessed. Always a fan. Now two generations deep. Deep. Thank you, Andrew. Ian Levy, I remember being a 13-year-old kid sitting in the stands at the Meadowlands, not far from here, and witnessing Stan beat Rick Martell for the AWA belt. Oh, after all that, <laughs> I put my name down too. Oh, yeah. The 80swrestlingcon.com going to be here with Stan Hansen until 10 p.m. Online stores open until 9:30. Stick around for the live auction later on. Don't forget to listen to 80s Wrestling, the podcast, available on your favorite podcast platforms iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, you name it, it's on there. Give it a listen. All right, Sly Fitsenko in Illinois, too sly. There you go, nice and simple, too sly. Vinny C., how are you guys doing tonight? We're doing great. We're here with Stan Hansen. Share out this link to all your friends on Facebook. Tell them to join in the chat. Go to 80swrestlingcon.com. There you go, Sly. Aaron Karpinka in Canada to Aaron. Now, there we go. We're going to attack the Rockies. Now it's getting interesting. Here you go, Aaron. All right. Corey Bunce in Bradford, Pennsylvania. To Corey. To Corey. There you go, Corey. Vicente Garcia, Grand Canyon, Arizona, wants it to Andy, to Andy in black. 
Maybe later, thank you. <laughs> There you go, Andy. Right. Yeehaw. Still in the black. Anthony Robles in Staten Island, New York. To Anthony. Corey Bunce, Bradford, Pennsylvania, to Corey. Carl Baum, that event poster in the background is beautiful. That will be part of the auction later on, so stick around if you'd like to possibly place a bid. There you go, Corey. Jack Garrett, New Florence, Missouri, to Jack in black. in Magnolia, Texas. Another Texas gentleman there. To Allen, always hit hard in black. Anthony Robles, Staten Island, New York. This one is blue, blue. There. To Anthony. Keep those orders coming in, 80swrestlingcon.com. There you go, Anthony. Robert Laura in Mawa, New Jersey. Blue to Rob. Here you go, Rob. Yeah. All right, Brian Garan in my hometown, North Bergen, New Jersey. To Brian, that's red. red. Thank you, Darren, staying on top of the color coordination changes with the Sharpies. All right, Brian. All right. Chris Dombrowski in Caldwell, New Jersey, just signature and Hall of Fame 2016. Switching it up to silver. Jeff Rubis in Virginia Beach, Virginia to Jeff. <clears throat> Yes, sir. West Texas State. There you go, Jeff. Andy. Oops, oh. Oh, my signature, too? <laughs> I'm telling you, these people, they have a lot of nerve. 
<laughs> I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Andy Olinsky in Mount Prospect, Illinois. To Andy, AWA World Champion slash WWE HOF. All right, to Andy. Chris Curtis, first of all, thank you for sharing out the feed. My first memory of Stan was no holds barred in the sleazy bar, making fun of the Stooge execs. Would have been great to see you live. I'm glad we can find matches today. Thank you, Chris, for your contribution and for sharing the link. All right. All right. Where else we get? Stan Hansen. Stan Hansen. <laughs> Shame on those people. <laughs> If my name was really Stan, I'd be able to write it. <laughs> Adam Groon in Valley Stream, New York. Or Grun, I apologize. To Adam, to Adam. Andreas, we talked about No Holds Barred a little bit earlier. So in the next couple days, 80swrestlingcon.com, you can see the full signing available on the website this is to simon simon says sez i'm not making that up that's what it says but it's to simon orlando florida to simon maybe this is jody simon jody jody that's Jody Malenko, of course, I'm talking about. There you go, Jody. All right. Chris Zaucha, Lake in the Hills, AC, to Chris Zaucha in silver. Z-A-U-C-H-A, it looks like. Chris. Lots of people keep asking about No Holds Barred. Uh, Thorsten Fritz says, how was it to work with Zeus and was he trained in some way? Was he like Hollywood fight trained or was it more of a wrestling training for the movie or anything along those lines? You know, I I, I really don't know. You know, yeah. I don't know if he was trained at all. Yeah, because I know he wound up in WWE not long after that. They had him do the, uh, the SummerSlam match. Yeah. Uh, this is in red, Josh Quist in East Moline, Illinois, to Josh in red. Thanks, Josh. Clint Reed in Wichita, Kansas, just the signature in black. black. Sandgren, what was it like seeing Vader's eye come out of his socket? Did either of you guys panic? You know what? I take my glasses off. I can't see nothing. I, I didn't know. I, I saw his eye all swollen up, but I, you know, I, I have no idea about it popping out. If that's not a testament to just how tough you two are, because if my eye ever popped out of a socket, I think I'm going home. I think that's when I say, all right, you know what? See you later. So that's a true testament to the quality of men that we're dealing with here. Uh, Dennis Grinnell, to Dennis in black, WWE HOF 2016. There you go, Dennis. 
All right, now we're switching it up to black. Oh, we still have black. All right, Joseph Gardella in Bronx, New York. Just signature. <laughs> Eightieswrestlingcon.com. Keep those orders coming in. All right, we have <clears throat> Angie in Piscataway, New Jersey. To Angie, to Angie. Edward Romero. One of my most epic memories of Stan Hansen was the backbreaker on Martell into the ring post. Ian Levy was talking about that earlier, being at Meadowlands for that title change. If you have any comments or questions about the career of Stan the Lariat Hansen, get those comments in the chat. You can share the link on Facebook. Big welcome to anyone who's live. Excuse on, me. Ah, uh, that's all right. There you go. Oh, no. Tap the Rockies. You'll feel better. WrestleZone.com. If you're watching, thank you. If you're on Facebook, please feel free to share the link. WrestlingCon.com. We're going to be here with Stan Hansen. Till about 10 p.m., get those orders in. Check out the list of all the great upcoming signings that we have. Lowell Reed just joined the chat. Good to see you, Lowell. Our mail-in signed on camera as well, Jeremiah Johnson. Yes, we will be getting to some of the mail-in merchandise in just a little bit. That's been sent in from all over the world. Don't forget, we have that live auction coming up at the end. 80swrestlingcon.com What's this about Jeremiah Johnson? Jeremiah Johnson, oh, he has our mail-in signed on camera as well, because we have fans from literally all over the world that have the Stan Hansen action figures, they've got Japanese wrestling magazines, so they send them to Hades Wrestling Con, you sign them, and then Tommy Fierro ships it back to them. So it's not just people ordering online, it's people from all over the world. And, you know, again, if we were able to do this in person, you'd be able to see the stuff, but... It's always got to be uh, great. Are there ever anything that gets put in front of you, whether it be an action figure or merchandise that you just don't remember even having, and then someone... Well, I think there's a lot of bootleg stuff out there, <laughs> you know, to be honest, you know, that a lot of things I have no idea. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, Jeremiah Johnson, uh, why, why you mention that or whatever, you know, that's my favorite movie of all time. Jeremiah Johnson. Oh, all right. Well, that's the guy's name. So Jeremiah oh, Johnson's yeah, in the chat. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I, I really enjoyed that movie. There you go. Eric Hansen in Washington, Illinois, in blue. To Eric. Craig Wilbur. You couldn't have gotten the man a banquet Coors. Coors Light is for tiny wangers. Craig, I, I don't know if Coors Banquet's even available. This isn't Cobra Kai. All right? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Coors Banquet. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can always talk tough when we're behind the computer. Craig Wilbur just likes to bust chops, though. I, he's always having fun on the chat. Don't forget, you can share the chat to all your Facebook friends. I feel like a lot of people wind up placing orders because they're just scrolling through Facebook and they're like, what's this? It's time to order. 80swrestlingcon.com. Jeremiah Johnson says, if you're talking about me, Mr. Hansen, my dad was a fan of the movie, so his dad must have named him that from the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's a great movie. You learn something new every day. All right, this one's in blue. Kerry Felstead in the Great White North Canada. To Kerry, AWA, world champ. Kyle James, WCW should have gave you the world title. I think a lot of people would agree with that. I don't want anything given to me. I want to win it. There you go. The attitude to have. All right. Sean Aiello in New Jersey, red, just signature, WWE, HOF, 2016. Go. Nigel Edgington's asked this uh, several times, and I'm not familiar with it. He says, when Terry Gordy refused to work with Hulk Hogan in Japan in 1990, how did you get involved? 
Well, they needed somebody to wrestle Hogan, and uh, you know, I wasn't even on the card a couple of days before. There you go. You know, Bob, I said that uh, we need, needed an opponent. So simple as that. Hank Newbert in Tampa, blue just <clears throat> signature, AWA world champ. EddiesWrestlingCon.com, get those orders in. Also check out the list of all the upcoming signings that we have over the next few weeks and months, actually. If you're watching on WrestleZone.com, we welcome you. If you're watching on Facebook, feel free to share the link. All right, this one is Tony Tremor in New York. Just signature, AWA world champ. Mike Ronane, breaking San Martino's neck. Did you know when it happened in the ring? Was it like an instant thing that you knew? Yeah, I knew that, uh, that I slammed him on the end, on the back of his head, you know, at about an angle. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I, I didn't know at that time that it, it was broken. And it's, I mean, yeah, uh, he was a tough guy. Well, things happen. And what's the old saying that I've heard a lot of wrestlers say? It's not ballet. So these things do happen from time to time. Tim Allen, I don't know if it's the comedian Tim Allen, probably not because it's Boston. So Tim Allen from Boston, silver, just signature, and here we go, I broke Bruno's neck. Yeah. Oh, we gotta do it again, it's okay, we'll get another one. Thorsten, I, I think we already know the answer to that no question. <laughs> 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in. Oh, I can. We'll just get another one and redo it. Don't forget, we're going to be here with Cowboy Stan Hansen. The store is open until 9.30. We have that great live auction with all these items behind me. Some of you actually commented already on the poster. Stan Hansen versus Ivan Putski. It's a card from White Plains, New York. A lot of who's who on that card. Kevin Sullivan. And so forth. We've got the WCW United States replica title. It'll be signed by Stan Hansen and auctioned off later on. Here we got Andy in New Britain, Connecticut. Two Andy and Mason. This one's in the back. In the back. There you go, Andy. Mason. Don't forget to check out 80s Wrestling, the podcast on your favorite platforms. Jumpin' Jay and Tommy Fierro. Also follow the Wrestling Collector store on Instagram. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get your orders in for Stan Hansen. Also figure out how you can send your memorabilia from anywhere in the world for any of the future signings that are coming up. So go to 80swrestlingcon.com and check that out. Bill Lasseter in Staten Island, New York. He wants it to John O. To John O. All right, John. Thorsten Fritz wants to know if you have any memories about Bam Bam Bigelow in Japan. Uh, yeah, I, I like Bigelow. You know, he for a big guy, he you know he could move. You know, 
he was a real big guy, but he could move. You know, that's what I remember about him. Yeah, that was always amazing to watch uh, guys. It's like a lot of guys like that. Uh, big boss man, same thing. Watching right, all yeah. these guys, yeah. and me being the little fat kid, it was very inspiring to be able to uh, to, to see the big guys move like that. But yeah, it, it always amazes me that it seems like in Japan they would let guys that were that bigger size really just go out there and do their thing. Where I feel like in America, and this is just from a fan's perspective, I don't know anything more than that, it just feels like in America guys were kind of held back. Whereas in Japan, they really just let stuff fly, let the big guys do what they wanted to do. And so I think we see more of that style nowadays than we did back then. Mm. Keep those comments coming. Any questions, any memories about the career of Stan the Larry and Hansen, we're going to be here. Keep those orders coming in. 80swrestlingcon.com. Are we going to get to some of the mail-in stuff Wait now? Wait for Tommy. Wait for Tommy on that. Oh. Tommy took a quick... Oh, all right. Tommy took a quick powder. While that happens, 80swrestlingcon.com. Keep those orders in. If you're following us in the Facebook chat, please feel free to share it. Any comments or memories? Emil Menard, our auction champion, just joined us. So if you have any memories or questions, keep them coming in. I'm going to scroll up and see if there's anything that I missed while we were busy signing. Kyle James says the AWA screwed you. So, <laughs> what else do we have going on? Also, there's also well, they say I screwed them. I guess it's all about perspective, right? Yeah. I think hindsight's always twenty twenty. You know, we all look back on different situations and say, ah, I wish I had handled that differently. But part of those stories make for great wrestling lore. So, right. yeah, I don't know if I regret, but uh, you know. I don't take anything personal, and hopefully nobody else does. Yeah. Well, that's why I really enjoyed one of my favorite things uh, over the last couple of years was when <clears> you did that <throat> WWE Legends with uh, JBL on the network. Yeah. Because you could see the admiration that he had for you, and he's such a huge success in his own right, just entered the Hall of Fame. And so it was great because, you know, JBL has that reputation, whether it's deserved or not, as the loud mouth, Texas, and, and then to sit next to you and just to see the rapport you guys had and, and just see that admiration, it's great. Are there any other talents nowadays that you see that you could say, oh, wow, Stan Hansen rubbed off on him? You know, sad to say, I, I, I don't get to watch it a whole lot right mm. now. You know, I don't. I got grandkids and everything. They keep I, you I'm busy. pretty busy and everything. But J, uh, JBL, I mean, he, he, in his own right, he, he, he became a really great guy. I met him in Japan way back there. When, and, uh, you know, I'm glad he's had this great success. And, you know, there was a lot of great Dickie Murdoch, mm. Terry Funk, you know, all those guys just great mentors for me you know and anyway no yeah. that's that's the and well if dick murdoch is is a mentor of yours i think that you have no choice but to be tough i love hearing the stories about yeah. dick murdoch from back in the day here we have the wwe encyclopedia so this is carter cole in richmond virginia and this is black just your signature right there we got a couple of these uh, encyclopedias i believe they put these out is it every year or every couple of years? Uh, somebody, if you know in the chat, you can feel free to let me know. But I'm always amazed. And this one is the Wrestling Collector. So black, just signature for that. We got a bunch of these encyclopedias coming in right now. Rick Allen wants to know what's Stan's favorite beer. <laughs> oh, let me uh, Asahi. <laughs> Alrighty, um, that's one of those. Maybe drinks. Budweiser, since my son works for it. So. Oh, all right, there you go. <laughs> Got to get that plug. I better in. say that. <laughs> Thank you to the wonderful people at Anheuser Busch. Uh, this is Dana Smith again, WWE Encyclopedia. Just signature. Sign it big over your section. Just, just your signature big. Dana big. Smith is correcting me. It's every four years on the encyclopedia. 2008, 2012, 2016, and 2020. Thank you. I was curious to know how often those were put out. Lots and lots of encyclopedias. This one is Robert Williams. Black, just the signature. 
Marsha Hess says, hello, Stan, one of your fans from Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Wow, this is a great poster. This is the early days of ECW before it was Extreme Championship Wrestling, Eastern Championship Wrestling. Talk about a who's who on this poster. Of course, we have uh, Stan Hansen. We've got Don The Rock Morocco, Shane Douglas, who was here last week. Superfly Jimmy Snuka, Road Warrior Hawk, Eddie Gilbert. Black, just signature. That's a great poster right there. Just your signature. Right here. Right there. Right over your face. That's good. Keep going. Cliff, we talked about Tiny Lister, the late Tiny Lister, a few minutes ago. So in the next couple days, go to 80swrestlingcon.com. This full signing will be available there. This is wild for me to see. This is uh, the WCW is War Games. Is Tiny Lister passed away? Yeah, he passed away, uh, I want to say, like seven or eight months ago with COVID. Really? Yeah, it was very unfortunate. Yeah, I hate to hear that. Yeah. And it seemed like he was a wonderful guy. He did all these signings. was great to the fans. This is uh, War Games 1991. You and Vader on the cover. Uh, I guess this is the Japanese version based on uh, the language. But this is really cool to see. This is for Carlo in Rutherford. He wants just your signature right there in black. <laughs> All right, here we have Ringside Wrestling, the magazine. This is Jonathan Golombruski in Greenfield, Wisconsin. Silver, just signature, right up here, the article, I'm keeping Martell's belt. Just your signature right here. What? Just your signature right up here. Over there? Yeah, I think like your picture is good. Perfect. Thorsten Fritz with another interesting fact that I actually read about uh, yesterday. Stan is the only man who has one-on-one -on -one wins on Giant Baba and Antonio Inoki. Did you have a preference on working one or the other, and why? No, I don't. I don't have a preference. You know, I've worked for Baba for 25 years, so that probably says a lot. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for Inoki, and uh, you know, he gave me a great opportunity. All right, so this is, uh, I, I, I wish I could pronounce it, I don't read Japanese, I'm sorry, but it's a beautiful magazine, it looks like it's in great condition, I'm always envious of these fans that keep their collectibles in such nice tip-top shape, I wish I had done the same, but he wants uh, white, I broke Bruno's neck, uh, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing that you don't enjoy Yeah, when that no, gets I don't, uh, you know, I mean, there's many other things I can say about Bruno. But, uh, no, I, I understand. I how. think he would probably laugh about it himself now. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't imagine back then what that was like. I mean, because I just hear the stories about, you know, Bruno San Martino in Madison Square Garden. I have a friend who became a ticket broker. And he said the reason he was able to start a career as a ticket broker was because of people wanting to go see Bruno at Madison Square Garden. So I can only imagine uh, what the, you know, energy was for those for those matches at the Garden against somebody like Bruno. Well, you know, first of all, there, I, I personally feel that uh, there was nobody like Bruno uh, in uh, 1976 over more than Bruno, Bruno with everybody. I mean, the wide variety of, of fans and people and everything, he was, he was quite a champion and quite a man and never held it against me for me hurting him. And, uh, you know, we we corresponded until, you know, right before his death, you know. And uh, so I have a lot of respect for Bruno. Yeah, it's great to hear. So, guys, ease up with the, you know, I broke his neck stuff. <laughs> Just for future reference. Nicholas De Silva in Canada. Here's another uh, great wrestling magazine. From the land of the rising sun, gold. So he's signing it that name there? I believe it's Gaijin Goat. Gaijin Goat. And quotes, use. All right. Gaijin Goat. Stay <laughs> handsome first. See, I told you I'm not good at pronouncing Japanese. 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in.
We're here with Stan, the Larry, and Hanson. If you're watching on Facebook, please feel free to share the link out there to all your friends. Don't forget about all the great upcoming signings that we have in the coming months. I'll say youth. I'm not saying the other. All right. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I think he means greatest of all time, gauche. That's 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 like what the kids say now. Oh, know, is that know. right? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like when they call Tom Brady the gauche, it's the greatest of all time. But it used to be they'd have the periods like G O A T. Now they just put goat the word. So. Yeah. Okay. Well. I <laughs> If you if you twist my arm, I, if that's the case, I guess you know I don't know about that whether it's true or not. No, it is true. I promise you, I'm not making it up. I may not be, okay. Mr. Hanson, I may not be the world's smartest man, but I'm smart enough to not lie to you. <laughs> Especially when you're sitting this close to me. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in. Hey, I'm. I'm old school. I'm not new school. I don't know all that new stuff. I hear you. I'll, I'm, I'm so only in my late 30s, and I have a hard time keeping up. It feels like every couple of years, stuff changes really fast. James Fabino in Edison, New Jersey. Silver to James. <laughs> That's funny. It's the truth, though. I can't keep up. I always. It seems like every day I hear like a new term or phrase, and I'm like, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Too many abbreviations. Nah, exactly. Well, it's because of all the texting and the emojis, nobody knows how to talk anymore. Yeah, you're talking Greek right now. I don't <laughs> all right, we have another Japanese magazine. This is Andy Hammerlink, another friend to us here at 80s Wrestling Con. It's black. Black, just signature. Classic cowboy look right there with this promo. Andy Hammerlink from Minnesota. Black to Andy. It's my favorite hat. Oh, the one in that picture? Yeah. Now, how many do you think you've had over the years? Rough, a rough estimate. Well, I've had about three or four of those because I liked it, but I've had, I don't know, I don't know no, much. I would probably imagine a lot. 15 it, to 20, you know, different hats. Did any ever get ruined on your way to the ring? Someone throwing something like a soda or a beer or anything like that? No, I always duck. <laughs> you would be able to see them coming from a mile away. After a while. Uh, I can't see anything. <laughs> I can't see past here. I take my glasses off. But. Andy yeah. Hammerlink in Minnesota again. This is a, an amazing picture right here. Actually, one of my favorite hats is right over there. <laughs> oh, the one that uh, Mr. Sunny Beach is wearing right there? That's yes. one of your favorite hats? There you go. I've never tried a cowboy hat. I don't think it would be a good look on me. I think my head is like too egg-shaped. It would look very strange. <laughs> Andy Hammerlink in Minnesota. Here we have Black Just Signature. Alright, 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in. Here we have, uh, I believe this is a, is this a DVD cover? Yeah, from Lucha Libre Anniversary 1987, once again, Amerlink. Yeah, I remember this match against the missing link. Wow. That was probably a wild one. I'm going to go out on a limb. Yeah. <laughs> he was missing all right. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot of stories about him. Again, there's certain guys that are just characters that, you know, they're in and out of the ring. Antics uh, just become part of lore after a while. Yeah, he, he, he had quite a... And here's another one of these Lucha Libre. Uh, oh, this is actually a VHS cover here. And this is uh, you right here on the spine, Carlos Colon, 
versus Stan Hansen, and on the front cover, he's choking you with your own cowbell. You're both bleeding. And again, Andy Hammerlink, and when you hear these stories about Puerto Rico and just how wild the fans are, Oh, right here, right over his, right over his, right over his face, no, right. right here. No, I, I want over his face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, we got Peter Piviesti, Bronx, New York. Upsar is still working on that one. It's okay. Let's put it right there. So here we got two Peter, and he wants Teeny Wanger on, on the uh, picture itself. Was there a while when that movie came out, especially like where you would just be walking somewhere and someone would shout it out to you? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe so. I think, I think that would be something that people would definitely remember. I'm telling you, iconic lines stood the test of time. Teeny Wanger, Teeny Wanger. <laughs> Darren's spelling it. <laughs> I never thought there'd ever be a day where, <laughs> where we had a teeny wanger. Well, whoever wrote that line, I'm glad they wrote it because that's probably the only thing they remember about that movie. I mean, my involvement anyway. All right, Pete J. Well, no, it was more than it was a very funny scene, and I'm actually surprised. Or maybe this was by design. Were, were you offered other Hollywood projects after that, and you weren't interested, or? You know, I I, I never pursued it. I I, I kind of regret a little bit at that. You know, I, I could have done some good characters. I think a character type of little acting, but uh, no, I, I I didn't pursue it. And uh, you know, I was going to Japan still. Yeah. Pretty much well, it's never too late. <laughs> no, I don't know. If there's ever no holds barred, too, we want to know what happened to the teeny wanger guy all these years later. So, Pete Jameson in Kentucky, just signature AWA world champ in silver. silver. Get this silver. 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in. Check out all the upcoming signings no, it's right. over the we'll next few them. months. We'll Lots of great stuff them. coming up. We'll get them all. We're going to have that live auction coming up in just a little bit. This Let's see if anybody red. dethrones Emil Menard. And red coming up. Okay. Yeah, we got red and blue. Red and blue. Okay. So we'll have them on deck. This is Jim Myers in Wallington, Delaware. Red, just signature. Just signature and AWH. <laughs> Next up, Jim Keller, Minneapolis, Minnesota. A lot of great wrestlers come from the state of Minnesota. Blue, just signature, WWE, HOF, 2016. Don't forget, guys, if you're following us on WrestleZone.com, welcome aboard. But if you're watching us on Facebook, please feel free to share this video chat. Let people know that we're here with Stan the Lariat Hansen. They can get their orders in at 80swrestlingcon.com. They can also check out the list of all the great upcoming signings we have over the next few months. Monday Night Virtual, Mondays 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's pretty wet. And now we got Bob Mitchell in Pennsylvania. Blue, just signature, WWE HOF 2016. As Mr. Hansen signs that, don't forget, 80swrestlingcon.com is where you go to place those orders. Keep those comments and memories coming in the chat. 
All right. Next up, we got two Andy and Mason. No teeny wangers. I don't know if that's what they want on the picture or if that's what they're saying. No, they want it on the picture. Andrew Snyder, New Britain, Connecticut. To Andy and Mason, no teeny wangers. <laughs> to Andy and Mason. Nigel Edgington wants I'm to know. I'm not sure how you spell wanger. <laughs> Darren, you want to help him spell wanger? <laughs> not tonight. I, I, think, I think that was correct. If, if you go according to phonetically, I think that's correct. Nigel Edgington wants to know if there were ever any offers for you to join the WWF during the Hulkamania years. You had talked about being in No Hold Barred at their request. Did they ever consider bringing you in during that time to maybe have a run with Hogan? You know, I talked to a, a few things, but I was going to Japan, you know, almost full time. And, uh, you know, I, I never give Japan up to go anywhere. So, you know, that nothing ever materialized. But when I worked with Hogan in, in Tokyo, uh, uh, Vince Jr. was, you know, nice enough to say, anytime you're ready to quit uh, Japan, mm -hmm. come on, come on over. No, I know, Hulk, but that never happened. No, I know Hulk Hogan. Obviously, we all know about Hulkamania and how it took over the United States with mainstream and whatnot. And I know he was popular in Japan as well. But I mean, was he as popular in Japan? No, I would imagine that when he was over there wrestling you, the fans were probably solidly behind you at that point. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. No, I think you know. I mean, uh, it, he was well thought of. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's why uh, we went against each other. Mm -hmm. So you know. <laughs> He, he was over in Japan, too, you know. Tim Jameson in Newark, Delaware. Blue, just signature, and AWA world champ. Keep those questions and comments coming. we got some good ones we're about to get to. 80swrestlingcon.com for all upcoming signings. Also to place your orders for Mr. Hansen. Don't forget, we have that live auction coming up tonight. Thorsten Fritz wants to know, why did Stan not want to be a part of the Desperado stable with Dutch Mantel and Black Bart and WCW? Mm. I wasn't a cartoon. There you go. That, that makes sense, right? Kyle Adams in Boston, Massachusetts. Blue, just signature, AWA world champion. You're pretty much on every page of this. You magazine. know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying that those guys that were part of the Desperados, you know, they, you know, they were a cartoon. I, you know, they were they were good talent in themselves. I just didn't like the way the promotion was going. You know, with me, mm -hmm. so I, it has nothing to do with. It. Oh no, makes I'm sense. I'm not disrespecting. Oh, of course not. No. Those other guys. Of course not. All right, so for Sean Donovan, another beautiful uh, Japanese wrestling magazine right here. And we have Blue Just Sign, Stan Valeriot Hansen right there. Oh. 80swrestlingcon.com. Keep those orders coming in. If you're watching on WrestleZone.com, how you doing? If you're watching on Good. Facebook... Hello to you as well, but go ahead, share the link with some of your wrestling friends. You could tag them in the chat, or you could just share it on your feed. I'm sorry, Darren. But okay. Oh, okay. So this is uh, Sean Donovan, again, in New Jersey. Black Stan the Lariat Hansen. Eric Grosso says that magazine is a special issue just on his retirement. Great piece. It was great to page through it. He was on... Almost every single page, so that was cool to see. 
That's one of my favorite things about hosting these, is seeing the memorabilia from all over the place that people have cherished for so many years, and they trust 80s Wrestling Con to handle it. Another for Sean Donovan, Black. Stan the Lariat Hanson. Y'all are adding more to it. They love you, Stan. I appreciate it. All right. This is a Japanese trading card. This is for Chris Zamney in Wall, New Jersey. Silver, just signature. Uh, right now, we're going to be joined by a special guest. He was on the pre-show with Bull James and Vicious Vicky. Good friend of yours. He was in No Holds Bar. Do we have a chair for the, uh, uh, gentleman? if we could grab just an extra chair. He's making his way over right now, ladies and You're gentlemen. Oh, you want to go on this yeah. side? Whatever side he's most comfortable with. We have Mr. He can S sit anywhere he wants to. You, want, you know what? I'll Thank move you over. Stand. You want to take the middle? Am I still in the show? Yeah. No, we you can sit next to Mr. Hansen right there. <laughs> we need you to move. There you go. And you uh, sure? Yeah, why not? All right. And now we have uh, The Last Outlaw, the book by Stan Hansen. Here's uh, Bob Tyrer. <laughs> And he wants in silver. I don't know exactly where he would want it signed, but uh, on page 297, you got to look there. Now, for those of you that weren't uh, tuning in for the pre-show, uh, Mr. Sunny Beach was talking about how you guys met on No Holds Barred? We met on No Holds Barred on the set of No Holds Barred. And just remained friends? Back in 1988, yeah, June of 1988. Wow. And it was in Atlanta, you said? It was in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, where we were filming our uh, scenes at. Now, where they did that Tough Man contest where Zeus got introduced, that was a, a legit bar, or was that like a special set? It was like an octagon bar. It was a special set that they set up in an uh, old uh, mill. Oh, okay. Uh, little, like a uh, mill that they had. They just used it for the movie set. And, uh, we filmed our part about it. It took us about a week to film all the fight scenes in the no-count bar, they called it. So I had a big fight scene with Joe the Duke. And then uh, after I got beat up by Joe the Duke, Stan came in there and fought Joe the Duke and beat up Joe the Duke. And then after Joe the Stan got, uh, you know, won over Joe the Duke, then Zeus came in, and then him and Stan, you know, fought it out. And, and, and Zeus then pretty much cleaned house of the... Uh, pretty much. Yeah. And it was always amazing to me Not because... Not pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're working... So now, how much of that, I mean, you guys both as wrestlers, a Hollywood fight is much different than an actual wrestling match with workers, right? Oh, I mean, there's yeah. just so many takes in between and do that again. Well, you have stunt coordinators on the set and stuff like that. And I was never in a movie before. I was just wrestling a lot of independent stuff. And mm -hmm. I was working for Jerry Blackwell with Southern Championship Wrestling at the time. And they called me up and uh, they said they had a part for me in the movie. And I was just happy to be there. So I said yes right away. Yeah. So um, it was a great time. Um, I got to meet Stan. We became, you know, friends from pretty much for life. You That's know, awesome. Because that. there's a lot of downtime on a movie set too, right? Hanging oh, yeah. out in the trailer and whatnot. And we would go to the gym, Gold's Gym down there in uh, Fayetteville, uh, Georgia, and then we would go to like Buckhead Diner for dinner and stuff like that. And we just uh, hung out the whole time on the set. That's great. Mike Gill in Charlotte, North Carolina, Silver, Just Signature, WWE HOF 2016. And I, I imagine that a lot of the uh, other actors that were involved in the production, too. I mean, I, I've always noticed that a lot of people in Hollywood, even if they're not publicly uh, acknowledging it, they really respect what professional wrestlers do. I think they do. I mean, we work hard. We're away from our families for, you know, months and months out of the year. Mm -hmm. And then we miss a lot of holidays. We miss a lot of our kids' baseball games, football games, you know, birthdays, you know, to put money on our table for our families. And, Stan's a great family man, and um, you know he, he sacrificed a lot. You know, working in Japan and doing his thing, and yeah. you know, as, as most of the boys do in the business. But um, you know, it, it worked out pretty good for him, without a doubt. And that's why we're here now. 80swrestlingcon.com. Question, uh, comment. Where are we moving it to? Over here. <laughs> a little, little behind the scenes for everybody here. I'm being directed off camera as we speak. This is for Bobby Fenderlender in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Blue, just signature, AWA world champion. Keep those comments and questions coming. We're here with Mr. Sunny Beach along with Stan the Lariat Hansen. And so, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to catch up in the chat right here, looking through some of the comments. 
Don't forget, you can share this out on Facebook. Emil Menard says, I'm on vacation. Keep losing internet connection. I can't miss this. Well, calm down, Emil. We haven't gotten to the auction yet. This guy, Emil, is amazing. He, he just bids so much money on every auction item. And then if anybody else tries to chime in, he just shoots them right down. So it gets very exciting. All right. Uh, Kim Tyre in Keensburg, New Jersey. Red, just signature. AWA World Champion. Like back to your question about like the stunts and stuff like mm -hmm. that with the movie set. There was a, our stunt coordinator whose name was Buck McDancer. Okay. And he was a big Hollywood, uh, you know, stunt coordinator. And you know, none of us really had any experience other than our wrestling experience. You know, putting fight scenes together and all that stuff. And they pretty much worked with us. You know, the first couple of days we were there. Oh, sorry, so you had never acted prior. I never acted prior oh, wow. either. Like Stan or even Tiny Lister had no prior ring training. You know, with the wrestling or even fight scenes or mm -hmm. anything like that. So we were all, you know, huddling up, talking about what we're going to do, and the, the stunt coordinator would tell us what he wanted to do, and the camera angles, and how to lay, you know, uh, the angles out, and the fight scenes, and how long we were supposed to go, and all that stuff. So it was pretty interesting. Now, was there any talk of maybe that you were aware of or privy to during the filming that they knew that they were going to bring Tiny Lister and his Zeus to WWE, or did that come much after? I production? think they had a plan. I think that's you know why they set him up with Hogan, and they saw big money, you know, that they could draw big money, but. Well, the sad thing was that Tiny couldn't work, really. Yeah. You know, they put him with him, they tried to put him out there, but, um, you know, he was an actor first and foremost. Yeah. He was a great athlete. He was strong as an ox. I mean, we would go to Gold's Gym, and he was benching, you know, four, 405 pounds for reps, you know, so yeah. and natural strength. And I think he was, a, what was he, Olympic uh, uh, hammer thrower, I think he was, or something like that in college, if I'm not mistaken. He I just remember as a kid, I was, I was young, I was six years old, but even then, I mean, not being smartened up, it just didn't make sense to me because Jesse Ventura, who was brilliant, I remember trying to explain it. They were like, oh, he's mad at Hogan over the way he was treated on the movie set. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, no, but his name in real life is Zeus, but he's Zeus now again. So I think like it kind of backfired in some ways, but it was very entertaining because that man was so imposing, both on screen. Oh, he was a big man. Just a big, big man. Just naturally strong. Here we have, I believe this so is... So naturally. I'm sorry? <laughs> So naturally. Yeah, no, he was, he, that scene, I remember, what, what was he, he just would hammer down, I think it was on you in that movie, where he would just come down on someone's neck. With two oh, fists I thought we were talking about me beating up Joe LaDuke. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, we're talking about too. something else, huh? <laughs> Golly. Here we have, uh, I believe this is the, uh, Ian Levy's not here to confirm, he's usually my action figure expert, but this is the AWA Remco uh, action figure, Dustin Dubuque. Black just signature. Darren, I don't know where they want uh, that signed exactly. Let's see a lot of the things out here. Um, just some other 80swrestlingcon.com. Keep those orders coming in. We're here with Stan Alarian Hansen. We're joined by his good friend, Mr. Sonny Beach. We're hanging out. We have a live auction coming up. So much great memorabilia that's been sent in from all over the world. Got some good questions and comments coming up in the chat. Like I said, feel free to share this link if you're watching on Facebook. Matt Finney says, Mr. Hansen, describe your football days at West Texas State, and is this where you met Bruiser Brody for the first time? Yes. Yeah, I met Brody, uh, Brody and he was already at West Texas. Actually, I was a high school recruit. When I went to West Texas to get recruited, that's the first time I met Bruiser Brody. And I, there's an interesting story, but it's too long to tell now. We've got some time if you want to give us a version of it. <laughs> well, the guy that was showing me around, you know, as a high school recruit, you know, everybody had a, had a room, right? And I said, I wanted to see where, you know, I might be staying in the dorm, right? And so this was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And he goes, uh, you know, well, and then he stopped. I said, well, uh, let's, let's go see the room. So we're going on, and he stops and says, he says, you know, everybody has a roommate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to kind of accept what the roommate is or, or does. I said, okay, yeah, all right. So he says, so when he walked in, there was like a line down the middle of the, of the room. On one side was Phil Hampton, the guy that was showing me around. It was The bed was made. Everything was nice and neat. And on the other side, there's trash all over the floor. It's just that gum, no sheets on the bed and everything. And it's two in the afternoon, right? And he raises, this is my roommate, Frank Goodish. And he raises it up like this. Oh, 
of wild hair and everything. That's the first time I saw. Oh the wow, Brothers. that that's quite the uh, first impression right there. <laughs> yeah, I like that. And then there you go, and the magic you guys wound up creating afterwards can't be replicated. This is a great uh, <laughs> card right here, Sean Barton, another Japanese uh, trading card. And this is you and Antonio Inoki on this card. That is quite the collectible right there. This is silver to Sean. This was confusing me before, because I'm like, which is the front, which is the back? <laughs> yeah, they are confusing, but those are pretty cool, like the comic book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the graphic novels, I believe, right? Isn't that what they're called now? Oh, yeah. This is amazing stuff. Dick Murdoch. There's Bruce everybody Bruce. in there. Everybody, a who's who. So here we have a, a graphic novel. I, I apologize, I can't read Japanese, so, but it looks We got like an interpreter here. Oh. <laughs> so what does this say? Can you can you see it from that far away? I don't... Oh, so that's just their names and the characters. Okay. So there you go. Here we have it. And this is a black, just signature. Jose Navarez, he also wants H. I love when it says just signature, then they have other stuff. HOF 2010, PWHF, HOF 2016, WWE. See, the cool thing, too, about you know some of the wrestlers, like back in the old days, like a lot of guys came out of West Texas State. Mm -hmm. Dusty Rhodes, Dick Murdoch, Tully Teddy Blanchard, Biasi. Right? I think Tully was there. Mm -hmm. Tito Santana. Tito Santana. Merced Solis. So they had, you know, some of the top guys in the wrestling business came out of West Texas State. Yeah, and well, there's always like these clusters I've noticed too, right? So then like, Minnesota, Min and yeah. Tampa, and, you know, and Atlanta. And there are clusters everywhere. And it's amazing, like, to watch these guys as a kid, and then when you get older and you learn that, like, oh wait, no, Rick Rude and Mr. Perfect were best of friends. Like yeah. guys that you never would see necessarily even working Minnesota together. Minnesota crew. Yeah, and that's the stuff that I love about being able to do these signings because you just get so much different, uh, you know, feedback and, and, and just great <laughs> stories from the past. All right, Mike Aiello in Georgia, just signature along with Texas. Eighties wrestling. Smile when you say Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, Mike. So how often do you guys, I mean, I know now with the pandemic, that kind of threw a monkey wrench and everything, but do you guys get to spend a lot of time together and, and hang out? or Not as much as we, we'd like to, probably. Uh, you know, Stan lives up, you know, out west, and uh, I live on Long Island, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard, you know. He's working, I'm, I'm working, and, you know, our wives are working, so it's hard to get yeah. everybody off at the same time. But uh, you know, we see each other, what, a couple times every couple yeah. of years or so? Yeah. yeah. We catch up right where we left off, yeah. and you know we have a great time together. That's awesome. Like, like Vicky was talking about it earlier, that camaraderie just never goes away, and especially with what you guys. I mean, you met on a movie set. That's what's so great about it too. Right. And, you know, and you remain friends. Now, did you ever do any more acting after No Holds Barred? No, nothing else. I did a couple. like tried to do some commercials and mm -hmm. stuff in Manhattan, and I did a couple little short things, short little movie things, but nothing really big like No Holds Barred. Yeah, it's got to be tough too, I would imagine, because you know, as a wrestler, you do everything live and on right. the fly, and then to have everything be so micromanaged on a set where everyone's got an opinion, everyone's got input. Whereas as a wrestler, you probably had to deal with maybe just the promoter and the, the agent for the match, right? Pretty yeah, much, you had the booker and you had the promoter, mm -hmm. and you know, they would tell you, you know, what you were going to do. But uh, you know, it is what it was. And uh, the movie set was, you know, it was all, you know, you had a script mm -hmm. and you went by the script, so. Which is what wrestling nowadays. There's a lot of script and stuff. And what's well, Ray's movie? It's a Ray's movie. Um, Pam Ticello in Las Vegas. I don't know Brand. The name of it. Yeah. I think you put the name on it. Yeah. Just Signature and WWE HOF 2016. Yeah, right talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Just Signature. Signature. Also, our good friend Ray Lloyd. Um, Glacier. Yeah, right? Glacier. Okay. I helped break him into business, and he, oh. yeah, we got him a little role as an extra at No Holds Barred. And then he got his little break with WCW as Glacier and everything. And he's been doing a lot of independent stuff and working a little bit behind the scenes with AEW and stuff. Okay. So um, he was just up here a couple months ago, and he's filming a, a little movie. Uh, Stan was in it, Haku was in it, um, uh, Ernest the Cat Miller, I think, was oh, wow, in it. Okay. Um, 
Larry is the Bisco. Larry is the Bisco. Uh, Steve Luther and um, I think Ron Reese might have been in it too. The giant Ron Reese. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's gonna that's in production now, and they're uh, I guess doing post production work on it. And I don't know when their release date is, and I'm not even sure the name of the movie. But I think it's called uh, Expandables or Expendables. Expendables. I think oh, that's great. what they were saying. The name might be Expendables. Well, I know Ray Lloyd is on uh, on Facebook. Yeah. So if you. He's on any other social media. Are you guys on any social media? I know you're on Facebook. I'm on Facebook and uh, I think Instagram. Okay. Um, but that's about it. I'm not on there a lot. But. Yeah. Well, that's what I find of a lot of these uh, wrestlers from your era, especially. They're either like, yeah, I'm, I'm on there because I want to, you know, show pictures with my family or whatever. But then everybody else is like, no, nah, I don't mess with it. Right. And it, it's weird to watch that now because now all these wrestlers, even in WWE and AEW, they all have social media. And it's interesting to me to sometimes see them portray a character on TV right. and then their social media will be something completely different. 100% different. And you're like, that's completely different from what you guys lived with because you had to live who you were in that ring 24-7, if I'm not mistaken, right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, when you're in character, you probably stay in character. Yeah. I'm not sure what social media is. <laughs> <laughs> you're not missing much, I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, I'm not on it. You're probably better off not. No, Tim Eskert in Denver, Colorado. Black, just signature, WWE HOF 2016. ADSWrestlingCon.com. Get those orders in. Don't forget 80s Wrestling, the podcast, available on your favorite podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. New episode each and every week with Tommy Fierro and Jumpin' Jay, so make sure you check that out. We're joined tonight by Stan the Lariat Hansen and his good friend Sonny Beach hanging out with us. Here we have one of the famous after mags, The Wrestler, revealed the NWA's plot to lasso Stan Hansen Black. Just signature. Mike, can I get that charger? No? All right, well then, show's over. <laughs> All right. What's that? No, I do not. Yes, please. I'll return it as soon as we uh, complete the signing. Keep those questions and comments coming in the chat. Right now we have for Lisa Query in Bristol, Connecticut, Just Signature and WWE HOF. Wondering if, if it'll reach. Think it'll reach? Oh, wow, look at this. You're really getting on there. I think not. Oh, sorry. I think this will work, yeah. Just to give us enough juice. As long as it's not bothering you right now. No, it don't bother me. All right. Nigel Edgington wants to know if you guys hung out with Hulk Hogan on set or off set during No Holds Barred. A little bit. He was around a lot. And I guess his daughter Brooke was just born and stuff, so he was really bragging about you know his first baby yeah. being born and stuff, so he was excited about that. Oh, that is so cool. So we got to hang out a little bit with him, but he wasn't there a lot when we were filming our scenes, though. Yeah. Tony Jacobs in Jacksonville, Florida. He wants Jacksonville. Just Signature and No Holds Barred. Craig Wilbur, 80s Wrestling is a class act. Ryan Moore is the GOAT. Oh, he spelled it out, though, G-O-A-T. So thank you for that clarification, and thank you for the kind words of hosting these events. Tommy always brings, and then the fire emojis. I guess that means Tommy always brings the heat. Well, thank you, Craig, and thank you for all your support. Without the fans of 80s Wrestling Con, we wouldn't be able to do these. And for both of you, Thorsten Fritz wants to know if you have any Dr. Death Steve Williams memories. <laughs> oh, that means there's a good one coming. Green in the UWF, uh, I'll, I'll start if you don't mind. Yeah, go right in. I had a partner, uh, Steve uh, Ray, Wild Thing Ray, and uh, Steve was a little bit cocky, a little bit, you know, arrogant once in a while. So Herb Abrams uh, put him one night with Steve Williams on TV, a TV okay. match, and uh, they went out there. And Steve uh, Ray wasn't really, you know. Uh, selling or you know he's trying to run his mouth a little bit and Doc got upset and then punched him right in his nose and broke his nose and opened him up and uh, then Steve Ray he was like a, a lamb afterwards <laughs> after that he apologized and everything and it was a pretty good story but uh, Doc was nobody to be messed with believe that so I mean, many of those guys from that era great right? guy great worker uh, great football player you know he was great so you know uh, uh, Steve was 
to me one of the the, the biggest horse of them all in, in the ring. He has a phenomenal strength and everything. And you know, at his funeral, you know, there was a, a, a bunch of people. There was Barry Switzer, the coach at Oklahoma, who coached him and everything. He came to the the funeral, and everybody had great stories to tell about Steve Williams when he was at Oklahoma, and uh, the respect that they showed to him, you know, really was something to be behold, and I I was glad I witnessed it. Yeah, well, he, he's another. Even before the days of the internet, I feel like Steve Williams' legacy of being a legit tough guy, as they say. You, you heard about it, even as just a, an unsmartened up casual fan. So that was like, there's certain names you always heard. Your name is up there, Haku, uh, and, and Dr. Death Steve Williams. Those are like the three names that come to mind of like, you know what? Those guys can really do some damage if they wanted to. You know, Steve was a five-time All-American, four in wrestling, one in football at Oklahoma. I think he's the only one that ever crossed over, you know, especially five times. Yeah. You know, yeah. and his name's up on the wall there in Oklahoma. I was impressed. Yeah, no, that's definitely uh, definitely an impressive legacy and, and, and one that will probably never be duplicated again. Yeah. yeah. All right. This one is, I'm sorry, Andy Tenna. Wow, I can't make that out. But hi, Andy. How are you? Uh, Mr. Stan Hansen, please use green Sharpie sent with, uh, please do not. All right, so that's that special one right there. And uh, this is Stan Hansen chokes Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> Another football All American that we worked with was uh, Del Wilkes, uh, the Patriot. Patriot. He was All American at uh, South that? Carolina right for there? football, so he was another Just your signature guy, you know, okay. athlete, you know, with wrestling and football. So he was great, and he had a phenomenal career too. I remember yeah. watching him uh, as a kid in WCW, and then later yeah, in the late nineties, WWE. Yeah, if you came out this, I'll be happy with that. <laughs> You can get more of these pictures at 80swrestlingcon.com. I believe the store is going to be open for about another 25 minutes or so, so get those orders in. This is for Larry D'Angelo in Connecticut. And silver just signature. And then, I won't say it out loud, but there it is what they want written on it again. <laughs> Once I found out you weren't too crazy about it, I'm not saying it. You're a smart man. No, well... I'm not that smart. After a while, just a little common sense takes over, you know? Common sense isn't so common anymore. Unfortunately, right? Isn't that the truth? It is. Keep those comments and questions coming. We're here with Stan Lariat Hansen and Mr. Sonny Beach. Great stories. They met together on the set of No Holds Barred over 30 years ago. Still friends to this day. Love hearing stories like that. Don't forget, also, 80s Wrestling, the podcast. Jumping J and Tommy Fierro, make sure you check that out. That's the way I spell. Okay. All right. So this is in red. Mike Shannon in Delaware. And you can tell him what it says. <laughs> you know, the more I say that, you know, I understand. You know. I don't like it. I mean, accidents happen in the ring yeah. every time. I'm mean, looking poor Darren Drozdoff and oh, everything please, else. Yeah. And, um, you know, s several other guys in the ring. The one uh, the guy that was working with Marty Jannetty, you know, he got paralyzed. And, oh, yes, uh, yes. You know, accidents happen. And they yeah. got, you know, Bruno healed up and everything worked out. But Well, and I also think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you gentlemen would know much more about this than I would. I think what happens, too, is that because it becomes almost public knowledge. I remember seeing the old magazines, they showed Bruno in the hospital. I think fans sometimes don't realize that the line is blurred between reality and fiction. So I think it almost becomes like, you know, a whole, oh, well, that's how vicious he was. And it, it almost adds to the heel persona. They don't understand that these are real life people that are friends, that have a lot of respect for each other. And these things happen. I'm not excusing that it becomes kind of lore, but I think it just kind of naturally does. I mean, any contact sport, you could get hurt. So yeah. That's the thing, boxing, wrestling, karate, mm. jiu-jitsu, MMA. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so. Yeah. I remember, because, like, when Vader, I think, wrestled uh, a, a gentleman in WCW who was known as a job guy, and I believe, like, that gentleman's back got broken, and then that just got added to, oh, here's Vader, the man who broke so-and-so's back. I, 
I just feel like that, that always becomes a thing for fans to talk about, whether it's a good thing or not. Adam Pop in Michigan City, Indiana, to Adam in blue. Or blue, I'm sorry. There you go. It's all right. TheEighties.WrestlingCon.com. Keep those orders coming in. If you're watching on WrestleZone.com, hey, how are you? If you're watching on Facebook, feel free to share the link out there. Tell your friends to get their orders in. Check out the list of all the upcoming signings. Tony Look wants to know, did Stan Hansen ever wrestle Randy Savage one-on-one? -on -one? Hmm. No. You probably, you've probably worked with so many guys, you have to probably think of yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I've, I've never worked with... Uh, Randy, I knew Randy well though. I liked I liked him. You know, he was. I knew him before he became the big superstar and everything. And I, you know, he he was he was a good guy. That's great. It's got to be always nice. The too. whole the whole Papo, you know, his dad and everything. You know, they you know they, and uh, what is it, Lanny? I, I didn't know Lanny as well as I knew Randy, but uh, Randy was pretty intense. <laughs> that, that, that's that's what's been said many yeah. times over the years, right? Miguel Sato in Florida, black, just signature in black. There you go. Nice. Thorsten Fritz, did you auction his book? No, the book was actually sent in by a fan, so there are some great auction items that will be up for grabs, though, in just a little bit. All right, next we got John Collins in Pennsylvania, red, red, and Brody forever, Brody forever. Signature two? Yes, your signature yep. and Brody forever, yep. A lot of people talking about the AWA World Heavyweight Championship win from Rick Martel. Any memories from that match? Betty Malark wants to know. Anything specific stand out from that match? I, uh... <laughs> anyway, I had a lot of great respect for Rick Martel. He, he, he was, uh, we were in Dallas together as both, he was younger than me, but uh, he, was, he was really young. He was like 19, and I was like 23, and uh, that's we ended up wrestling against each other, you know, many, many times. And so, you know, later on, when he was the champion and everything, it was uh, it was uh, really, you know, great to be reconnected with uh, him, and he was very successful as the champion, and you know, I was, you know, honored to take it, take the belt from him. And I always love watching the old footage of his career as, as the young baby face and then to watch him as the model, Rick Martel, and see how he was able to, to just totally flip. Like you would never know that those were the same people. You know, right. It was the yeah. same person, just two completely different aspects of personality. He That's was a great, a great, great talent. Great very, talents. very talented. John Lesacco in Lombard, Illinois. Silver to John. Welcome back, Emil Menard. I know that he keeps going in and out while on vacation, his internet connection. I'm sure he's pacing back and forth somewhere in Florida, getting ready for that auction. <laughs> Good to see you, Emil. Leslie Duraco, or it could be DeRocho. I think it's Duraco, though, in New York. Blue, AWA World Champion. 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in. We are gonna be here with Stan the Lariat Hansen, we're being joined by Mr. Sunny Beach. And we're gonna be doing a bunch of these Monday night virtuals. Go to 80swrestlingcon.com to see the upcoming list of all the talent that's being brought in. All right, next up we got John Peppermore in Chicago, Illinois, great wrestling city, Chicago, in black, AWA. World champion. I guess this could be for both of you guys. Is there specific cities in the United States that really stand out to you where you knew, like, okay, in this town, I know it's going to be extra electric because they always deliver. Any favorite cities? We get another one. Stan, you want to start with the favorite cities? We got to do it again. Don't worry about it. I mean, I like Don't worry Madison Square yeah. Garden. That was probably my favorite right arena in the United States to work in. Yeah, we're good. We're the Sun Dome down in Tampa was a nice electric spot. In Philly, it was always electric. 
Rosemont Horizon in Chicago, the Kyle Palace out in San Francisco, uh, Houston Summit, that was really nice, uh, Atlanta, the Omni and stuff, so um, yeah, now it's a great place. A lot of legendary, uh, and did you get you know chances to uh, sightsee at all, or were you just so focused on? Believe it, most of the time when we were on the road, like when I was with the WWF, uh, you know, we were in different towns every night, so we would fly in, do our, do the show, fly back out the next morning, early in the morning, so we didn't really get to yeah. sightsee or do any really cool just, things. Just your name. And back then, we didn't even have cell phones, you no. know, back in the mid -80s, late 80s, you know. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, we still had the phone cards, you know, if you wanted to make a long distance call, you would have that Sprint phone card or something yeah. you know, back then, but, uh, you know, it's probably better off because if we all had cell phones back then, we'd probably all be in trouble and <laughs> still be in jail. There you go. Well, that's why I love following great, great. At 80s Wrestling on Instagram because, you know, Tommy curates the, the page and you always get your hands on, you know, some of these old photos that were personally taken by the boys and oh, yeah. then they, go, they come out now, so it's always cool to see, like, when... They were overseas in Europe. Maybe they did get to go to the Eiffel Tower for a few minutes or things of that nature. But it is unfortunate in a lot of ways that you guys are so busy that you don't have time to check out all the great stuff that's out there. Julian Ritchie in Connecticut, Red, Texas. Texas Red. <laughs> there you go. There's a comment from... Onacap La, O N I C A P L A. So I apologize if I butchered that. Closest thing I could find with Stan and Randy Savage was some Battle Royals in Georgia, 1978. So thank you for looking that up for us. We appreciate that. Andrew Crawley in Vermont, Silver Just Signature. Well, I want to talk about the Hereford Bull Barn, and I want to talk about La Ranger and all those little little bitty towns that uh, the fans came to, and uh, you know, never mind all the big, uh, big, big things. You know, twenty-two thousand people and everything. What about those people, four hundred and five hundred people that come out there and supported wrestling, and got to see some great, great wrestling too. You know. I enjoyed those as much as the big places. The, so the smaller, intimate venues. Yeah, you know, saying. just uh, I mean, those those fans were real fans, and you know, so I mean, you know, everybody loves to go to the big shows and you know the Spectrum and everything, mm -hmm. you know, and and, the, and those are great places, you know, great wrestling shows and everything. But you know, there's a lot of little little places out there that a lot of the fans had a real opportunity to get down there and be able to smell the matches. There you go. I think that's good. That's a, that's a great way to put it because last week, even when we had the ECW legends here, Shane Douglas was talking about, you know, the, the bingo hall, quote unquote, Viking oh, yeah. Hall. And he said, he goes, I would take that venue over any venue in the world. So there is definitely something to be said about those small, intimate, yeah. rabid fans because they, t they tend to be a little more wild than in the big arenas. I used anyway. to work National Guard armories, high schools, yeah. I mean, you know, and right. those were some of the best matches, you know, and that was, back then you had territories and you could hone your craft in these, you know, smaller towns and stuff like that, and, uh, you know, like Stan said, you get to smell the fans, and see all three, they could three smell me. in the front row, <laughs> you know, so... Uh, you know, it, it was a good time, and it was a good learning experience back then. And, and, and it's an advantage that you guys have that nobody will ever have again, because like you said, there are no more territories. You know, when you first started out, you had to set up the ring, you had to go out by the, you know, the, the veterans, you know, having their cold beer ready for them after the matches, and you have to drive them around everywhere, and they're, they're kicked back in the car drinking their beer, you know, while we're back going to another town, or, you know, you'd have to referee a match, or maybe you were, you know, somebody didn't show up, and they'd throw you in and work, you know, when you're just trying to get into business, you would do anything to, you know, get in if you wanted it bad enough, and nowadays, people don't pay their dues, they'll go to, like, uh, you know, some school or something like that, or they'll just get thrown in there, and, uh, you know, the psychology, they don't know how to, no, no. to work or they don't know the psychology and they can't even cut a promo. You know, they're being told what to do everywhere. Well, that's what was interesting too about uh, WrestleMania this past year. They had that delay because of the weather right. and they were just throwing it backstage and I would never mention any names because of course I'm just a fan, but it is a high pressure spot. But you could tell some of the guys that were used to having their words scripted out for them oh, yeah. and you could tell some of the guys <laughs> that actually learned how to cut a promo. 
right. and and there's just something to be said for it. it really is a lost art in, in general it definitely is you know what I, I, I agree you know I, but let me tell you you know talent is talent there's a lot of good young new talent that's out there and uh, you know uh, hopefully they'll be able to hone hone them their their sales and their career the way they would like to and take what they learn from the, the people that are teaching them but also just from people that they watch or you know look at some old tapes or whatever you know there's there's a lot of talent out there I don't knock the talent but mm -hmm. I, I think the opportunity to be able to you know really learn your craft and develop your own personality is it, it's hard to do it in today's world well, now let me ask you this, and, and this is for both of you, because you guys came up in the days of the territories. Was there back in those days, if you were cutting a promo for TV or whatever, would there be a veteran to you guys that would say, hey, kid, come over here, let me give you an idea? Did that go on a lot? Is that how you learned and got better? I don't think so. I, th I think that, uh, you know, the, the way I remember it, I mean, you would watch other people do, you know, do some promos and everything, and you would probably maybe take something from him and take something from the other guy and develop it but you are allowed to develop it into your own personality and it just depended on, on where the matches were what what was going on it was never just everything was set set you know as as it is there was a lot of individual choices to be able to do your your craft the way you wanted to go. Billy's Is that too deep for everybody? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. We love it. <laughs> Billy, Billy Thompson. It's too deep for me. <laughs> Billy Thompson in Berlin, Maryland. Silver to Billy T. The 80swrestlingcon.com. Keep those orders coming in. Don't forget we have that live auction in just a little bit. Billy T. T for Texas, T for Tennessee. I just want to confirm because this fell off. This is for Edward Romero? Right? Just, yeah. just a signature. All right, so the AWA World Heavyweight Championship. This is the rep replica. Replica. I can't even talk now. <laughs> Silver, Where's just signature. And this it. is Arvada, California. Edward Romero. Silver, just signature. So it's here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I would go. Uh, Douglas Dawson, that question has been discussed many, many times. So, 80swrestlingcon.com in the coming days, you'll be able to come back and watch. Delancey Burwell, hey, hello, Delancey. Welcome aboard. 80swrestlingcon.com, get those orders in. Right now, we have Tully Tucker in Pennsylvania, black AWA champion. I always love seeing some of these pictures because you see yourself. Just sign your name, you're the champ, yeah. Like you could tell he probably just got out of the ring, right? And oh, it's yeah. like somebody going, hey, smile or pose or do whatever, and then you never know that all these years later you'll keep seeing these pictures. So that's always cool to see. Well, the good thing back then, too, like the, the right. George Napolitano's and the Bill Afters, and, you know, the wrestling magazine guys were always at ringside for the big shows. Yeah. So, you know, they would promote you through that, you know, and that's how you got the, the break sometimes, too. You know what always fascinated me about those guys, especially, like, the Bill Afters and whatnot, that they were so trusted by all, like, like all these promoters seem to be so cutthroat with each other, and the talent can do this and can't do that. But yet they trusted these men to be in their locker rooms, hear all these things. Well, that would help sell tickets too. Yeah. You know, that would get their stars over in the magazines, and the people would come out and want to, you know, buy yeah. tickets to see their favorite wrestlers. No, it's just it, it, I was always fascinated by that. Jen Anderson in Dallas, Texas, blue AWA World Champion. There you go. I personally didn't let anybody into my dressing room. So now, what, like now, when you would be featured in PWI, though, and it would say like, like for example, you know, I had no idea what what people were writing. Oh, okay. And it didn't bother you, know, you to know that? No, I didn't. Okay. You know, what, they were going to write what they were going to write. You know, so. AWA World Champion. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I ran out more people out of the dressing room than I allowed in. Oh, I believe it. I could imagine it. 
I could, I, I could attest to that. Yeah, and I could admit, I could even imagine some people being a, a bit apprehensive on their approach. Even some well. of the boys, I think, got ran out. Of. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know about that. You know what? I've probably been run out myself. Oh, who's running you, Ash? Uh, you named it. <laughs> John Lasacco in Lombard, Illinois. Silver to John. Matt Stevens, this is awesome. I love the stories. Thank you, Stan and Sonny. Okay. Thank you, Ryan and Tommy, Stan, for all you do for us. Thank you, Matt. Thank you to Mr. Sonny Beach for gracing us with both the pre-show and here. We're having a lot of fun. It's always great to see friends take a stroll down memory lane. Silver Teeny Wangers, WWE HOF 2016, Stan Laddergas, Elcourt, North Dakota. Or was that it looked like an ND, so I assumed it was North Dakota. I'm getting a lot, of, a lot of people from all over the country. It just you know speaks volumes of what you guys are doing here. You know, it's, it really is great. Wrestling Con is you know unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I've just got great things to say about you guys. I'm watching you know Tommy work and his new uh, you know venture with the store and everything. You know, I wish him all the best. Oh, it's you awesome. Know, you guys are doing great things. So I'm just happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Well, we're glad to have you, and it's it's always great to you know have the fans be able to see some of their favorite wrestlers and just learn more about the history of the business. And I feel like now is a great time for that because everybody has access to the internet. Everybody has access to the right. WWE Network. And sometimes it's cool when you see certain stuff. Like I have friends that used to work for WWE as the job match guys. And sometimes right. you'll just be going through Instagram and you'll see, oh my God, that's so-and-so working with Earthquake. And some fan right. just posted it. So it's always nice to see those things. Jeremiah Johnson says that you ran Missy Hyatt out of the locker room, and I do remember that. I believe that was, was that Halloween Havoc, Jeremiah? Correct me if I'm wrong. No. But I do remember that. It wasn't Halloween Havoc. But, uh, I'm trying to remember what pay-per-view. I think it was either a pay-per-view or a It was TV. in Phoenix. Okay. You know, <laughs> that's when I just, you know, that, that was the straw that broke the camel back, and uh, I wasn't with the WCW anymore after that. Oh, okay. But, you know, I have no uh, disrespect for Missy Hyatt, you know. I mean, uh, you know, they just wanted to go a different direction that I wasn't willing to go. I, I totally respect that. Nigel Edgington in, oh, just Nigel Edgington. Two Wayne, AWA, world champion in blue. Check out 80swrestlingcon.com for all the upcoming signings. We have the list. We got, we're going to be back here on May 10th with Ken Patera. May 17th, we got Eric Rowan and Darren Young. May 24th, we got Nikita Koloff. June 7th, the Rock and Roll Express, fresh off their appearance at the Wrestling Collector Store. June 21st, Head Shrinkers. July 5th, Tyrus. July 26th, Dean Malenko. August 2nd, The Godfather. And August 16th, Mark Merrow. So all those signings are available at 80swrestlingcon.com. You can place your orders. You can also find out how you're going to be able to send your memorabilia in to have it be signed. Edgar Edmond in Maryland, Silver, WWE HOF 2016. Some big boys here. That's a nice one. This is a really great picture. All right, this is going to be in blue. Stan the Lariat Hansen. This is for Sean Donovan. Stan the Lariat Hansen. Beer? Yeah, it's fine. Next up, we got Scott Hardgrove in Hearst, Texas, to Scott. A lot of Texans uh, coming in there. There you go. Support and stand. Look at that. Without a doubt. Edward Romero, hey, Stan, thanks for signing my AWA title. You're the last man to hold that belt. You signing it is so awesome. I just saw your name. Thank you for sending it. 
forward. Uh, Scotty from Hearst, Texas, say hi to my cousin Ed Lair there, please. There you go. <laughs> Sean Donovan again, another. Here we go. Same thing in blue. And Larry Hansen. And Larry Hansen. Blue. Yes, sir. Matt Finney. Mr. Hansen, how intense were those Borger Pampa contests back then? <laughs> yeah, they were they were intense, all right. Pampa you know. was who you were referring to earlier. I remember, right, when somebody sent in something for yeah, Pampa. About, told, yeah. Well, now I'm going to go home and do my homework. Pampa and uh, you know, there's a big rival of Borger, you know. So Borger was Phillips, uh, you know, petroleum had a big plant there, and uh, anyway, they, they were. Everybody was pretty uh, much in Texas uh, competition against each each town. So, Borger and Pampa, I mean, Knox City and Rochester, you know, there's a bunch of everything. There you go. So, thank you for the comments right there. Jeremiah Johnson, also uh, giving Mr. Hansen some uh, props there, talking about his favorite movie right there, 80swrestlingcon.com. Get those orders in. We're still here with Mr. Stan Hansen. We're also joined by Sunny Beach. We're going to be having that live auction come up in just a little bit. A couple bit. of the fans were asking how Stan broke into the business, and he's got a pretty cool story. So yeah, please. If you want to share that. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry to put <laughs> you That's Harry. Yeah. 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 How I broke in. I was starving teaching school. That's how. Yeah. And uh, any anyway, uh, I'd met Terry. Terry was five or yeah. six years older than me, and gone to West Texas. And I was, uh, I came in as a high school recruit and everything. And uh, anyway, as soon as I got there, somebody said, "Guy, you, you know, you look like Terry Funk." And I parted my hair on one side, kind of like Terry did at that time. And uh, Everybody knew him at West Texas because he played football there too, and uh, so right right off the bat they were saying, "Oh, you look like Terry Funk." And I ended up, you know, going to the matches and watching uh, Terry a little bit. And he ended up uh, saying my name on TV, you know, one time I saw Stan Hansen from the old Buffaloes are out there supporting the wrestling, right? And uh, somebody said, "Well, God, Terry Funk mentioned you on TV." So what it's basically kind of how. Yeah, there, there's really nobody better to be brought in by. Or, oh yeah. no, that's wow. true. You know, he was. There was nobody like Terry. No, just. I mean, in, in Japan, there was absolutely no guy gene was over more than Terry Funk. Probably at one time, over more than any Japanese babyface. He was over because I fought him and we fought each other. Anyway, now do you now that your in ring career is over, do you still go back and forth to Japan? Uh, yeah, I, I still go back. I hadn't been back this year because of the virus, but uh, you know, I mean, I I go back probably around at least once a year. Wow. You know, and uh, you know, I, I I love Japan. You know. Yeah, I, I've obviously never been, but I mean, beautiful culture, and any American that I've ever spoken to. Even if it's somebody like a referee or whatever that's gone over there, they just always talk about how they fall in love with it and, yeah, and great. want to go back and visit as often as possible. You know, I would can. love to go back myself. I mean, I love it that much. And I thank Stan for you know getting me booked up when I'm bringing me over there because I got to see a whole new culture I've never seen before. Got to work with some great talent over there and you know, got to hang out with Stan. So we yeah. had a great time. And, and, and I love that in America, wrestling seems to be, in terms of popularity, very cyclical. Right, it can be, but over there it just remains consistently popular. It seems, from my estimation, the way the fans talk about it and whatnot. Oh, the, the Stan is so revered by the fans over there. I mean, I'm going to put him over a little bit here. I know he doesn't like to get put over, but I mean, they would follow him all over in the streets, and you know, they wait for him. You know, coming out of the dressing room, and you know, and it, you know, he's just got such a great following over there. You know, he's the number one American or guy gene, you know, ever to really work there. And he puts over Terry Funk and stuff, but the Stan in his own right, you know, he's was the man there. Yeah. You know, my generation at least, you know, 80s, 90s, you know, 2000, you know, until uh, Mr. Bamba died and then when he retired. So, I mean, he definitely put his time and work in and, you know, 
Yeah. It should be honored, you know, and revered for it. No, without a doubt. Next up, we got Mike Sanders from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Silver Just Signature, HOF 2016. And then next up, we're going to be doing that big chair as well. Make sure you stick around. Excuse me. Make sure you stick around for the live auction that's going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Don't forget, we have a bunch of upcoming signings. May 10th, Ken Patera. May 17th, Eric Rowan and Darren Young. Going to be two for one there together. May 24th, Nikita Koloff. June 7th, Rock and Roll Express. June 21st, The Head Shrinkers. July 5th, Tyrus. July 26th, Dean Malenko. August 2nd, The Godfather. And August 16th, Mark Merrow. That is a who's who of wrestling talent. So get your orders in tonight for that. But right now, we're still with Stan the Lariat Hansen, also being joined by Mr. Sonny Beach. Now we have Shane Trimbone from Dallas, Texas, Silver, just signature. Now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I'm just going to stand over. You want to just hand me that chair? Sure. Are you going to hit us with it? Uh, absolutely not, because I do not have a death wish. So. <laughs> All right, so this is a chair for Robert Williams. It's been signed by a bunch of talent already that we've had here at 80s Wrestling Con. So, Darren, I'll, actually, I probably should just pass this back over right. to you. <laughs> Any special Playing hot here? potato um, with the chair. Let's see here. Yeah, it's good right here. Perfect. Okay. Tommy, this is for um, Emil, correct? Okay. And now we have for uh, Mr. Emil Menard, the giant life-size Stan Hansen. Are we on camera with that? There we go. He's... <laughs> Quite the collector of all of these. It'll fit nice in your refrigerator. What is what we should sign it? <laughs> yeah, Tommy, just uh, personalize or. Team Bill, 80s number one wrestling fan. I got it. Okay. okay. Darren's right. got it. I got you. All right. He is the 80s wrestling con number right. one fan. Uh, let's do it up top here. You might have to stand up for this one because you have to go up to the top here and do this. Do what? You might have to stand up, stand up on this one. You got to go up. Uh, TheEightiesWrestlingCon.com. Don't forget about Eighties Wrestling, the podcast. Emil, E M I L. To Emil. Up here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Well, I can't write that direction. Oh. All right. While they're figuring out that, check out Eighties Wrestling, the podcast on your favorite podcast platforms. EightiesWrestlingCon.com. E M I L. All past signings are listed, as well as all the upcoming ones. E M I L. Put number one. Imagine that, like you put it like on your wall. You 80s. Wake up, you know, oh, yeah. in the morning. 80s. Yeah. Nice Wrestling piece, fan. It is, without a doubt. Yeah, he gets all of them for every talent that we have. I mean, you know, some of the fans out there, they're so special, you know. I know, yeah. Like, I can't believe some of the stuff they collect. And, and, and just your signature. You know, yeah. how, how they supported us throughout the years. You yeah, know, it's it's um, and I even said too. I, I always liked the action figures. I played with them and uh, the magazines. I didn't take that good of care of them, so I get very envious when I see some of these people that there. really, you know, we got some good stuff. Oh, there. without a doubt. Emil, won't you give that to me? <laughs> it's E M I L, right? Oh, it's E. I'm sorry. I got a fifty dollar fine over here. I made a little mistake. All right. You got to put an E on the end of that. Don't don't hit me now. Put an E right there. <laughs> Wait, it's only a $50 fine? Oh, that's it. That's when you great. screw up one of Emil's things, oh boy. Well, maybe a $300 <laughs> There you go. Right. Very cool. All right. Are we starting the auction now? or? We can start, yeah. All right, cool. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to have my uh, volunteer assistant slash pre-show host, Vicious Vicky. I think we'll start with this program right here. This is going to be signed by Mr. Stan Hansen. And three minutes starts now. We're looking for the opening bid of $60. Opening bid of $60 for Night of Champions at the Meadowlands. This was the AWA card where Mr. Stan Hansen took the AWA World Heavyweight Championship from Rick Martell, Ian Levy. It's Night of Champions. Well, at the Meadowlands? Meadowlands. Oh, okay, yeah. Ian Levy, our friend, uh, who couldn't be with us tonight, he said he was here present for that match. Quite a few people in the comments said they were present for that match. So we're looking at sixty dollars. Okay. So it's it. Oh, so that's going. Well, this is going to be uh, raffled off. Well, not raffled. Auction. Oh, okay. 
Gotcha. So we'll have you sign that in just a little bit. Yeah, let's... So we're looking for that opening bid of $60. Got about another two minutes. Where do you guys get all your like memorabilia and stuff from? The fans just send it in or you just go find it? Or? Uh, Tommy would be the one to talk to you about that, but I do know that a lot of fans send in their personal items. Uh, in advance, so like I just read off all the upcoming signings, they know, right. oh, hey, I may have a Ken Patera action figure, let me get it in, and they work out a deal. It's because of the wrestler, I always wonder where everything comes from, you know, like yeah. who has this, or just the fans trade with each other, or where they I think a lot from. of that goes on too. I remember t the, in the late 90s, uh, the tape collecting was huge, oh, people yeah. would trade the tapes oh, and whatnot. And Emil Menard says that big sign that you signed for him, he'll sell it to you. He wanted me to let you know that. <laughs> so. Well, we're waiting yeah. for you, Emil, to place a bid. We I'll have give you a dollar and a quarter. There you go. <laughs> so we're looking for a $60 bid. If this does not go in the live auction, it'll still be signed by Mr. Hansen, and it will be available for purchase at the Wrestling Collector Superstore, which you can follow on Instagram as well. So follow at 80s Wrestling. Follow at the Wrestling Collector. You can also follow me if you'd like, at Ryan Moore Comedy, Ryan M-A-H-E-R Comedy. But right now, we're looking for the opening bid, $60, for the Night of Champions 2 at the Meadowlands, December 29th, 1985, the night that Stan Hansen became AWA World Heavyweight Champion. Looking for that opening bid, $60. Who's coming in with it? you got about 40 seconds left. Well, the cool thing is that's part of history, so they're not making them anymore. So Yeah, without a doubt. You can own a piece of history. 60 bucks is pretty cheap to own a piece of wrestling history. TheEightiesWrestlingCon.com. Check out that upcoming list of talent signings. Everybody's going, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Emil says, I'll take a clothesline from Stan Hansen. Yeah, you could say that when you're home, Emil. I don't know. <laughs> if you were here, I think you might think differently. All right. Do we have a bid yet? All right. So no bid on the Night of Champions program. However, it will be signed by Mr. Hansen. And it will be available at the Wrestling Collector Store. All right, let's see what we have coming up next. We got Bruno San Martino and Stan Hansen on the cover of The Wrestler. And Bruno San Martino saying, I want to break Stan Hansen's neck. So that's a cover <laughs> of The Wrestler right there. So three minutes. Hold on one second. I'm just looking this up. All right, so $60, once again, $60, opening bid. This will be signed. Now, to talk about wrestling history here. That's huge. This is huge, and it will be signed by Mr. Hansen. $60, opening bid for The Wrestler. This is the June 1981 edition. We also have Roddy Piper and The Masked Superstar on the cover as well. So $60, RJ Evans. Anyone ask about No Holds Barred yet? Yeah, we've been talking about No Holds Barred. we got Sunny Beach, who was also in the movie as well. So go to 80swrestlingcon.com in the next couple days. When you're checking out all the upcoming signings, you'll be able to watch the full three hours of this signing. Looking for an opening bid of $60. Two minutes left. Come on, Emil, where are you? You know it's bad when you, when, when you just start banking on Emil to start placing these bids, but anyone can bid. Opening bid, $60. Sounds like Emil's such a good fan, he probably has that issue already. You know what, that's a good point too, because that's happened before with other auction items. Ivan Santos says, Stan, what was your favorite experience working for Carlos Colon in Puerto Rico? Does anything stand up? We had some good matches. Well, I, I think the one thing that we signed already, I mean, you guys, were, he was choking you with the cowbell, <laughs> and uh, so some very physical matches. Tony Seafeld, I watched Stan in Saginaw, Michigan. Saginaw, Michigan. Adam Pop, opening bid, $60. Thank you, Adam. So if anyone wants to outdo Adam, let's do $5 increments. So if anyone can come in with 65 and outbid Adam. If not, Adam's in the lead right now. Got about another 45 seconds. 
before we move on to our next item, which is going to be the signed boot. Thirty seconds left. Oh, thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Kyle James says he was in Japan to see you versus Hulk Hogan. Very, very interesting. Really? We're doing the boot now? Well, not yet. We're going to get to it in a little bit. I still got about another 15 seconds left for this magazine that Adam Pop placed the $60 bid on. Can anyone beat Adam Pop? We're down to 10 seconds remaining. And the magazine is sold to Adam Pop for $60. I'll put that right here. Alrighty, just let me double check because I got my auction prices right here. Alright, All right, so this booth is going to be signed by Mr. Stan Hansen. We're going to start the bid at $125. Can I see $125? Opening bid for this signed booth by Stan Hansen. Andy Nichols says, didn't Stan wrestle Terry Funk in New Jersey for Dennis Coraluzo? I want to say it was on a beach. Does that ring a bell? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it was. Dennis Coraluzo ran some great shows back in the day. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a great match, actually. I'd just flown back from Japan, and I was jet-lagged out, man. But, uh, yeah. We fought into the bay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you might as well use, up, use your surroundings, right? Why not? That's great. How often did that happen? Oh, I'm sorry. What, what year was that? That's what I'm, I'm going to ask him. Andy, if you remember what year that was, uh, please feel free to, to fill us in. How often did that happen, though, after those long Japan flights where you would just land and have to go right to another show? Not often. Not often? Okay. Yeah. I, that was, uh, I don't know, bad booking, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> 80swrestlingcon.com. Ivan Santos, more Puerto Rico memories. Stan one time hogtied Carlos Colon on TV. That was awesome back in the day. Emil Menard, 125, opening bid on the boot. Got about another minute and 20 seconds for someone to beat Emil. Andy, if you're still watching us, we'd like to know what year that was, that match against Terry Funk on the beach. Uh, it, for Dennis Corluzo here in New Jersey, Mr. Hansen does remember it, so if you could just refresh some memories by giving us the year, or, you know, roundabout. Right now, Emil Menard with the opening bid of $125 for the boot. Got about 50 seconds, and then we're going to move on. So he is a super fan. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. One of the best. Chris Briggs wants to know if you have any good Abby stories. I'm assuming that's Abdul the Butcher. No, I don't have any good ones. I got a bunch of bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's up to you. I mean, I don't, I don't push. So if you'd like to share, go for it. <laughs> yeah, Abby's Abby. There you go. Ivan Santos says 1990 in New Jersey, and it was on a lake. So there you go, 1990. It was it? not on a lake. It was on a, some kind of a bay or oh. something around. Okay. Jeremy Gibson just came in at $130. 130. I'm going to give Emil another 15 seconds because Emil 135. All right. I'm going to keep this going. See if anyone's going to top it. Got to at least get 150 for a sign stand handsome. I, I would agree, but 140, yeah, Jeremy Gibson. You know what? I'm going to give this another minute right. because it's coming in pretty hot. You know, I talk about Abdullah. He he was one of the top guys ever in Japan, you know. And uh, him and Tiger Jet Scene were the, the first two times I went to Japan. I, I had Abdullah as the, the, head, the head guy, and the next time was Tiger Jet Scene, and both of them were just over big time, and they were very in, influenced me into trying to yeah. do business in Japan. Yeah. That's, that's, 
Those are definitely the legends when you think about American wrestlers in Japan. Those are the names that come to mind. Emil Menard, 145. I have to close this out in just a bit. Is someone going to top it? I already got a minute over. What about 150? Yeah, I mean, can somebody come in at 150? I do like the way you're thinking. Come on, guys. Stan needs a new hat. 150. <laughs> All right, we've already gone a minute and 15 over. I'm going to give it to Emil at 145. So All congratulations, right. Emil. All right, next up we have White Plains, New York. Stan Hansen versus Ivan Putsky. So we're going to reset the clock for another three minutes. Joe B. Hold on a second. Tom, I don't, I don't see a price for this. I appreciate you. All right, starting bid for this is $200. 200 Anyway, thank you. So this is... White Plains, New York, Thursday, November 25th. Stan Hansen versus Ivan Putsky, Tor Kamada versus Victor Rivera. Gas House Gilbert versus Kevin Sullivan. Baron Skisluna versus Pat Sanchez. And of course, what's a wrestling card without a four midget tag team match? Price was $4, general admission five. Balcony and ringside six. There you go. Tickets available at the county center. So $200 is what we're looking for for the opening bid for this. It will be signed by Stan Hansen. That was a White Plains Civic Center? Yes, sir. Well, County Center. County is that Center. the same? I think Arnold Skolan used to promote that a lot. Exactly. I was just thinking yeah, that. Arnold. That was Skolan's yeah. Skull place. Yeah. Ivan Putsky, Polish Power, another uh, strapping strong man. Oh, my God. Right from he was the, in the world's strongest men competition too, pound for pound. He was one of the strong guys out there. Wow! See, I, you know, whenever I hear about strong guys, of course you think like Ken Patera. Ken Patera. And I, I never knew that uh, that Ivan Putski did the strong. Superstar Billy Graham, I think, was yeah. in it one year, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Who else was in there? Wasn't there a couple other wrestlers that were in it? Was Chris Taylor in the strong man competition? Or? I don't know. We're looking for the opening bid of two hundred dollars, as I almost poke my eye out with the sign. <laughs> That was a nice little catch on my part right there. 200 for this sign. Who's going to come in with that opening bid? Now those are getting harder and harder to find now, you know, because yeah. you know, when they were promoting, back in the old days, they would put signs up all over the, mm -hmm. you know, neighborhoods. Yeah, and I mean, and stuff. that was the, uh, the way they promoted all the shows, you know, with the card, you know, and Television was almost secondary. Yeah. You, know, you go down to a sporting goods store and they would sell, you know, tickets at the sporting goods store, local sporting goods store, maybe a, the arena box office, you know, and that, that was the only times you could really get tickets. Yeah. I always loved, like, I was telling, I was talking earlier off camera, I think, with Paul Jenkins about how, like, Mike, when yeah. Mike Sharp had his school in New Jersey, he had all these old signs, oh, like, yeah. all over the place. Yeah, most old Sorry. wrestling schools do. All right, and I guess this is going to be signed for... 200. Oh, we have 200? It's not coming up over here. All right, now I see it. Now it's coming up. Christopher Curtis, 200. So sold to Christopher Curtis, $200. So that'll be signed by Mr. Hansen. Somebody just asked, Sunny Beach wrestled in UWF, right? Correct. Correct. All right. Let's just stop. All right, and now, finally, our last auction item of the evening. We have the replica WCW United States Championship, which will be signed by Mr. Hansen. Can you just restart the right there. No, it's okay. So we're going to start at $300. We're looking for a $300 opening bid on the WCW United States Championship. AdiesWrestlingCon.com. Don't forget about all those great upcoming signings. May 10th, Ken Patera. May 17th, Eric Rowan and Darren Young. May 24th, Nikita Koloff. June 7th, Rock and Roll Express. 
June 21st, The Head Shrinkers. July 5th, Tyrus. July 26th, Dean Malenko. August 2nd, The Godfather. August 16th, Mark Merrow. Ladieswrestlingcon.com. Emil just comes in with $300 for the Replica WCW United States Championship. While that's going on, we have another order that just came in. Another Texas guy, Edward Hackett, Fort Worth, Texas. Black to Edward in black. Does Jared, Fort, if you just Fort want Worth to... ever cross your mind, Stan? Fort okay. Worth. Can someone top a meal? Cool. He's got the $300 bid for the WCW <laughs> United States Championship replica. This is to Edward in black. We'll use this black one for that. Two. Two stockyards. Fort Worth. Yeah. For both of you gentlemen from Thorsten Fritz, any Jimmy Snuka in Japan or in UWF memories? Stan can answer that. Yeah, he was Good. something. <laughs> He was a real deal. Him and Brody uh, got into it one time out on the street. There used to be a steakhouse we all used to go to, Ribera's. And, and uh, anyway, Frank and Jimmy got crossed for some reason. And it went on forever. You oh, know, boy. They, they ended up being good friends in the end, you know. But uh, all right, so we're looking for someone to top Emil's bid of three hundred. WrestlingCon.com. Don't forget about all those great upcoming signings we have over the coming months. All the past signings are also available on the website, so check them out. If you asked any questions tonight that we had already discussed or covered, they'll be available on the website in the coming days. Wait and see if anyone can top. Guys, you got to remember, too, there's also a delay here, so I'm looking at a clock. Once that clock gives a time, I went a minute over. I'll go about 10 seconds over on this one, but right now, Emil Menard... He's got three hundred dollars. He's got his bid in here. If you want to top it, you got to top it now. And sold to Emil Menard, the WCW United States Championship, three hundred dollars, right there. I do not want this to drop on the table. So there we go. Eighteeswrestlingcon.com. All the upcoming signings. Well, I, I'm sorry, I just got a. Oh, all right. So get those orders in. We're still here with Mr. Stan Hansen. We're also being joined tonight by Sunny Beach as well. Don't forget all these upcoming signings that we have. We're going to have great items, auctions, things of that nature. So if you missed out tonight, please feel free to join us for our upcoming signings over the next couple of Mondays. We're gonna be back on May 10th with Ken Patera, May 17th, Eric Rowan and Darren Young, May 24th, Nikita Koloff, June 7th, The Rock and Roll Express, June 21st, The Head Shrinkers, July 5th, Tyrus, July 26th, Dean Malenko, August 2nd, The Godfather, August 16th, Mark Merrow. So lots of great talent coming up in the coming months for Monday Night Virtual, all different errors. We got 80s wrestling, we got Monday Night Virtual for the Attitude Era, lots of great stuff coming up. If you have any more questions or comments while we're still being joined by Stan Hansen and Sunny Beach, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Any questions, comments, memories from the past? Just had another order come in. Ishmael Flores, Stockton, California, in black to Ish. Rest in peace, Brody, baddest man alive. RJ Evans, uh, in answer to your question, that date is being uh, changed. There was a little bit of a scheduling issue there, but there'll be an announcement about that in the coming days, I would imagine. Justin Shirley, greetings from Corston, Corpus Christi, Texas. How you doing, Justin? Thorsten Fritz wants to know if there's any Road Warriors memories. Now, those are another uh, two guys back and forth in the United States and Japan quite a bit. Any uh, memories of the Road Warriors? You'd like to share? I love how you just point. You're like, oh, Stan's got them. Stan, Stan where were them more than me? Yeah. yeah I, 
I really liked, uh, I mean, I liked them both. You know, they were, they were good guys. And they were green guys, you know, when I first met them. And uh, I felt like that they had a great future ahead of them. And they were real green and everything. They got broke in up in Minneapolis, uh, you know, by the... Eddie Sharkey. Remember. Yeah, Eddie Sharkey. And he broke in a bunch, but they uh, they were good. Jake Stevens wants to know if you have any memories of the Von Erichs. Fritz. And, uh, you know, I, I worked against Fritz a few times. Uh, and uh, it didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a, when you look back at old footage of, of that, Fritz von Erich, that's a heel right there. I mean, I feel like well, nowadays, too. It was in Dallas. He wasn't a heel. but uh, Oh, in Dallas, okay. Yeah. But he, uh, he, he was, he was a, a big guy, you know, a big, tall guy, you know. And he was over in Texas for sure. And, he, you know, he trained his sons. You know, he had great sons, but, you know, sad, sad, sad how the family, you know, ended up, but, uh, you know, uh, a number of bad things happened, but, yeah. uh, you know, they were, uh, they were quite a family of uh, wrestling. Without a doubt. Before we uh, wrap this up, uh, Janelle Anselmo, who's a regular in these chats, she wants to know if you have any stories about Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning and his uh, legendary ribs yeah. that he was known for. His what? Legendary ribs. He was a big prankster from what well, we always hear. Kurt Henning, if you ever experience. You're, it's Mr. Sunny Beach is smiling. I feel like you have one on the on your mind. Well, when I was with Vince, WWF, Kurt was there as Mr. Perfect and everything. And uh, once in a while, I'd ride with him and stuff. And he loved his country music, and he could sing some Merle Haggard. I mean, he was uh, he loved to sing country. Waylon Jennings, Merle Haggard. Mm -hmm. I mean, he loved all the old stuff, Hank Jr. And... Uh, he was just a good old guy. I mean, he, yeah. didn't, have, he didn't play no bad ribs or nothing yeah. on us, but I got along great with him, and, you know, he, he was a great guy to me. I mean, I had a good time with him. When I was in the AWA, I, I was really disappointed that, uh, you know, that I didn't really get promoted to the, you know, to be able to work with some young talent, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, I really wanted to work with Kurt Henning because I thought, you know, he was the type of guy I could go out and really, really do something. He, he, he had great talent, great fire. He was a great, you know, white feet, you know, white meat baby face, we mm -hmm. call him. And, uh, you know, he, uh, it, it's a shame that, you know, he passed away early, but yeah. uh, there was a real opportunity at one time. I think we could have drawn some great business together. And he's another guy in the same vein of, of a Rick Martell. It's like I'm a young kid watching him as Mr. Yeah. Perfect, this like cocky heel. Right. I and mean, then you go back and watch that babyface stuff, and you're like, wow, this is the same guy capable of doing two completely different role reversals. It's really Second amazing. generation wrestling. Yeah. He's had Larry the Axe Henning and Kurt, and then his son, Curtis Axel. And, you know, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's a wrestling family, and you know, I, I think he died way too young. He was a good guy. Yeah. Well, we're, we're getting a lot of comments, people jumping in at different times. Ivan Santos tells Stan he's well remembered, and thank you for the memories in Puerto Rico. Jake Stevens, did Stan ever get to work with the late, great Hercules Hernandez? I don't think so. I might have been in a battle royal with him at one time or something. Yeah, a lot of people were talking about those Georgia battle royals with uh, Randy Macho Man Savage. 80swrestlingcon.com. We're just getting some last-minute stuff together, but don't forget May 10th we have Ken Patera, May 17th Eric Rowan and Darren Young, May 24th Nikita Koloff, June 7th Rock and Roll Express, June 21st The Head Shrinkers, July 5th Tyrus, July 26th Dean Malenko, August 2nd The Godfather, and August 16th Mark Merrow. I hope this is coming to an end. We're almost done here.
Going back to the chat right here. Tommy. You hope this is coming to an end. It's almost done, right? It's just, just yeah, yeah. Watch this stuff. Yeah. Is, is this it's stuff for me to? You all everything in silver right there, and then the poster in blue. Yeah. All right, Joe Navarez, red, just signature, Hall of Fame, 2010, PWHF, Hall of Fame, 2016, WWE. And then if you want to just hand me that uh, magazine. Yeah, he wants you some black, okay? Okay. And do we have a name for these? Or? Don't start me looking. Yeah. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> So some more great Japanese wrestling magazines that are going to be signed by Mr. Hansen as well. Before we wrap this up, if there's anything upcoming that anybody would like to plug, it's no social media, you said you're on Facebook, but you don't really put that out there, do you? Not too much, no. but I'm out there Facebook. Yeah. Well, don't forget we have some great upcoming signings, guys. We have May 10th, Ken Patera, May 17th, Eric right. Rowan and Darren Young. May 24th, Nikita Koloff. June 7th, The Rock and Roll Express. June 21st, The Head Shrinkers. July 5th, Tyrus. July 26th, Dean Malenko. August 2nd, The Godfather. And August 16th, Mark Merrow. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Mr. Sunny Beach, thank you. Thank you for it's having me. It's always great to, to see friends rekindling and uh, hanging out and camaraderie. And Stan Hansen, thank you so much for your time, sir, and for all the memories that you've given wrestling fans all over the world okay, for all of these years. So, for 80s Wrestling Con, that is Stan the Larry Hansen. This is Mr. Sunny Beach. My name is Ryan Moore. Good night, everybody. See you real soon.